Hello and welcome to the Inglorious Bards. I am your covetous game master, Tom, and this is adventure number 20. Thank you so much for joining us. We're coming to you live from twitch.tv slash Inglorious Bards every Tuesday, 6.30. Uh, if you listen to the show on podcast, uh, consider dropping by and joining us on Twitch. Uh, chat with uh, some of the other folks. We love hearing your, your comments and your feedback. We are all super excited and I think a little uh, trepidatious might be the word that I I can't spell uh, about what's going to happen next tonight. We have uh, with us in attendance an audience member, uh, one of our fans, Thonwill, is joining us. So if you hear any uh, laughter or anything like that, that's unexpected. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, in addition, I have a note here that we gained an additional hero point late uh, in our last adventure. So all the heroes start with two hero points this yes. session, uh, which I don't think will be um, uh, pushed back at, Necessary. Uh, in any way. Necessary. Yeah. Necessary. Not going to need them at all. Not at all. So we've got that. Uh, we've got our heroes uh, traipsing through some hellacious terrain. Uh, we'll get a recap from Jeremy in just a little second. But I do have a question for each of our heroes. I'm going to start with Hemlock. Hemlock is our fetchling gunslinger. Hemlock, what do you think is going to happen next uh, as you're, you just left this hellish uh, teleportation area and you're heading towards this tower? What do you think is going to happen next, Hemlock? Uh, we're going to, of course, find a way into the tower easily and uh, slay a demon lord and then find our way back to Varen, an untouched tavern. Okay, so the optimistic route. <laughs> uh, we have uh, the champion in the group, our human champion, Yannick. What's going to happen next? What he said. All right. Well, well spoken. And... Uh, not as gravelly is our Thaumaturge, our supernatural swordsman, Galen, uh, our human Thaumaturge. Galen, what's your prediction? Uh, whatever happens, I think my pockets are going to be full of lots of little bits of uh, demon. I think I'm going to be walking away with some right. uh, useful tools in the future. Uh, next to you is the newest member of the group, our elven ranger, Thawn. What do you think is going to happen? Thawn is very keen on watching what is transpiring around him, what he's seen so far, demons galore, falling slowly or not, all of which need to be reported back immediately. All right, and Dash is our Yasoki, our rat folk kineticist. What do you think? Um, well, it's so far been a arduous journey that's been full of doom and lots of exhaustion and slow falling demons. So I believe we are going to walk straight into our deaths. Just dead. Okay. Not quite the hemlock positive approach. And last but certainly not least is Jericho, our gnome bard. What do you think is going to happen? Well, you know, it's really surprised us so far because we made good friends with Clifford. Uh, Cliff seemed uh, mostly helpful until we slaughtered him and all of his friends. Um, and now we found out that Vestrath actually used to be just a human ship captain. And, and our friend Hemlock uh, knows ship people really well. So I think we're probably going to go in. Uh, I'll say like little peep die, make friends, and we'll make a connection. We'll probably help him see the error of his ways and, uh, and kind of get this all sorted out. It'll all be fine. Just fine. Everything will be fine. Fantastic. Oh, not dead. <laughs> All right. Well, we are excited to get underway. Uh, without further ado, let's get a recap of what happened last time from Jeremy. The heroes were drowned by a dragon, but we asked for it. We uh, were riding Luminara, the Omen Dragon, who told us the only way out is down and dove straight down into the ocean underneath the demon realm that we were in, where the tower that she was locked up from, uh, she was freed from, and the ships that were all destroyed. In the process of that journey, all of us seem to have had some shared visions. There was a time that uh, both <laughs> Thon and Yannick were in the lobby of a house of uh, some gentleman uh, by the name of Hexton who uh, was about to leave said house on some journey and, you know, they were almost playing roles in Hexton's life, uh, up right up until the point where they were slaughtered and killed. Uh, there was also 
Dash and Yannick, who were together. I'm sorry, I, I said Yannick was in the house. Yannick, you weren't in all the visions. But Dash and Yannick were together. I should have been. And the ship, uh, as sailors who, uh, on Hexton's ship, called Hexton's Hope, who, with gore that was uh, painted on the sails, tore their way into hell. And were a part of that and were able to get into that particular area. And then the, the final vision was that of Galen and Hemlock together as some of the only survivors of that ship as it wrecked its way into this hell portal along with Hexton, uh, showing up in a very similar location that it looked like that we were at, but they were the only ones there until there was this large looming demon that Hexton spoke to and claimed that he wanted eternal life and would serve it and, and cause destruction across for Ren uh, if he was given the opportunity to serve whatever this creature was. Uh, that that asked him to immediately slay the other sailors that were with him, in this case, Galen and Hemlock, who died in that vision as well. When we all woke from our visions, we found ourselves in another plane, even a different plane than the one that we were on. We were on a shore near what appeared to be an ocean, but uh, behind us was a massively high cliff face, at least a thousand feet high. And there was a tower atop of that cliff face with a door up in the top of it, but we couldn't reach it, had no way of getting to it. The only way we could figure out to get around or through was certainly not to go towards the water. There was some bloody blob thing that was <laughs> seemed to be coming towards us. But we found a a carved out a break inside the cliff face that looked like it was carved by a river or a water that was running through it. When we turned and walked in, we found that not only was it a eerily straight and steady river that was coming through this cliff face, uh, but the water had been changing directions. It was actually flowing away from the ocean for a bit. And it went on seemingly forever. We encountered some sort of a rowboat that was on the river halfway through, but ignored it and continued to walk, literally taking hours up until we got to a house in the middle of a moat, in the middle of this lake, surrounded by cliff face, there was a house, a mansion, something that seemed like a very normal house for Varen, but completely non sequitur and out of place for this hell realm that we're supposed to be in, where Vestrath is supposed to be. We found our way across the moat into the house and found that it was filled with shadows once in a while and screams that caught half of the party's attention at one point. Um, and it was familiar to those who were in the house in that vision that they had with Hexton. This was Hexton's house, complete with bloodstains, paintings on the wall, and a guardian who was there to kill anyone who entered the house. Uh, in this case, however, it had a conversation with us. Jericho named it Clifford, and this monstrosity of a demon became a bit of an ally and a guide, walking us to the places that we wanted to go. It gave us options. It asked if we wanted to go to the Blasting Sands or to the the uh, Mirkwood air locations, the Merk Pond. Uh, we told it we we're trying to get to Vestrath, at which point it identified Vestrath as Hexton, that same human that we had seen in the visions. Uh, deciding to, for whatever reason, lead us there, uh, we left the house. The vision of the pond and the lake was gone. We're suddenly now walking through a vast wasteland, again, for hours. The light never changes. It's twilight the whole time, so we can't actually feel time passing except for just the exhaustion in our bodies. On our way through the Blasting Sands, we encounter what he referred to as the Anchor, where we see another one of these 200-foot dodecahedrons, where apparently the anchor of the ship lies. And with Vestrath's blood, several demons are allowed to cross into the Plain of Ren. Vestrath hasn't been around, though, and despite the fact that this gate is being surrounded by demons, we're seeing them fly through the sky, there's, there's hordes of them walking up to it, they are a snail's pace compared to us. They are in full slow motion depending compared to how we're moving. So we go there because Clifford has a friend there named Kriv, an imp who is in charge of the anchor, and explained to us how the process worked. But Kriv, like everybody else, was super slow. And they were super demons, so we killed them. We killed them all. 
They, we slayed them in a fantastic montage of blood and music. And we moved on from there as Jericho played us on. I assume that was, that was part of it. But Clifford finally took us to the place that we wanted to get to. The home of Vestrath. The resting place where he is supposed to be and where our adventure is now going to take us. As we enter the Ebon Sanctum. So from there, let the adventure begin. The heroes stand before a nether cliff that seems to go endlessly in all directions. Before you is a tower, a tower unlike the one you've seen before, yet still kind of familiar. It is made of stone, a dark red stone, very similar to the cliff it is against. The tower is off the ground by about 40 feet. Um, just hovering in place. It is not attached to the cliff. It is just a couple feet off from the cliff and the tower rises up uh, about 120 feet from its base and it floats there. No entrance, no foundation, no nothing. It is an enigma uh, within this hellish landscape. To the left and right of it are long paths carved into the cliff side that create long ramps, very, very long ramps that you can walk quite some distance to start to climb up. Not too unreminiscent from the stairwell from the house that you encounter that went left and right up to an upper balcony. You can see there is some sort of door that is facing you at the top of the tower, a big uh, black looking door way up there with a small balcony that is railed and you can get a little bit of a glimpse, particularly Thawne with your, uh, what is it? Uh, spyglass. Spyglass. Thank you. You can see that there are some metal, black metal ramps that uh, are hinged that are slapping down to connect the tower and close that gap to the wall paths. And that is your tower. No windows, uh, no entrance, and no sense whatsoever that there is a uh, exit at the bottom, as you have been told to find. With that in mind, we had asked one of the players to do a quick retcon and grab a demon claw when you slaughtered all those demons, taking all that time to slaughter them. And we said uh, Galen has uh, gone ahead and grabbed one just in case that comes up in the future. Uh, and then also for that retcon, we're going to add a tension die for taking all the time to, so to do much. that. It was someone else's recommendation last episode, and that's a damn good one. Uh, so that's where we're at. The heroes are there. It is, it is warm. You are a little tired from this constant uh, drudging through this landscape. Uh, it is bleak behind you or uh, uh, a flat cut uh, dark red rocks or black uh, uh, rock as well. There are no trees, no bushes, no grass. Uh, the sky is uh, uh, colorless. There's no clouds. You see no stars now whatsoever. Uh, it's a little oppressive right here. It's going to take some time to get to the top. I suggest we start right away. Agreed. There's no reason to wait down here. I'll race you there. Thon is eyeing Yannick, but here's race, and then goes. <laughs> <laughs> Dash lives up to his name and, and dashes as far past Thon as possible. All right. Left to right, gents. Follow them. So left to right there, gents. Dash, where are you going? Uh, point says right. Okay, adventure over. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right way. Uh, Dash goes right, and Dash, I believe you're the fastest of everyone when you're on all fours. Should be. Uh, yeah. What's your move speed? Full 30. 30? No. Thon can, Get can go 35 Whoa! on two legs. Elves. Uh, all right. I can use the other two? <laughs> <laughs> 
So 65. 65. Ma- mine's 30. Are you going to follow the dash or are you going to lead? I'll, I'll follow the dash. He, he was very in, intent on the, that. So. so it's patronizing. Oh, you're so fast. I'll you're just try so and keep up. up. Yeah, boy, I just can't keep Woo! up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he says jogging backwards in front of him. <laughs> Just uh, a puff of dust going up the cliff. Uh-huh. Like, oh, fuck's sake. Uh, more Tasmanian. <laughs> Dash goes running to the right uh, along the cliff face for some time, and he closes in on the ramp as it slowly comes down to him, if that makes visual sense, and then starts walking up or running up. It is a little on the treacherous side. You guys are heroes. You'll be fine. You wouldn't recommend this for everyday folks because it goes up and up and up about, what is it, 200 feet, and it's a little narrow, no railings, and it's slightly uneven uh, as you go. Uh, With Dash still taking the lead, uh, making the way up, and our heroes are creating a little trail as they go up uh, this cliff face. There appear to be any presence of uh, it, it's all dust and whatnot through here. Ahead of us, is there any visual indicator that other creatures have passed through? You may make a survival roll, and anyone who's trained in nature can make a nature roll twenty for a small little tidbit. Thirteen. I got it. You get it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you detect no trace of any disturbance, uh, Thawne, and then whoever got it, I know Galen was one, uh, you just detect that the temperature is getting warmer as you get closer and closer to the top. Um, decidedly warmer. Decidedly warmer, yes. so like effectively warmer. Yes. Okay. You make your way up. Uh, it is quiet, a little eerily quiet. You can hear some rumbling sound like a thunderstorm way off in the distance on the other side of the cliff face that still rises up above you, that there's something else going on there. There's also a wind that hits you, and as our heroes are making their way up, your cloaks are flapped about, looking down at this drop as you approach this tower. You get closer and closer and still see no other ways of entering, no windows, no nothing, just this one door. The tower is um, about eight feet off of the cliff face. Your ramp just connects, has a little bit of a flat area, and then goes down the left side of the tower that you also could have taken. And there are two, I'm sorry, one ramp, a metal uh, ramp, like a drawbridge, but only about eight feet, eight, nine feet long that's swung down. As you go with Dash, I still believe being first, Mm -hmm. as you make your way up to it, you see there's an eerie concept that there's a grating noise that keeps happening with that little ramp. And you realize that the tower is very slowly moving up and down very gently. And it's grating on that uh, metal ramp. Up and down, not consistent motion. It's going up. Yeah, it's going. It's like almost rhythmic, very slowly. Okay. As though it were bobbing in water. Uh, possibly. So we could see a door from the bottom looking up at the tower, and now we're at the top of the cliff face behind the tower. There's also a door there on that There's side. There's not. There's not. Okay. Just just the ramp. And what does the ramp connect to? Is it like a terrace? Or? Yep. There's a little terrace, a little um, balcony type thing there. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, ramped. Uh, not ramped. Railed. Uh, shall I have a look? I'm gonna, um, like I had done earlier, I'm gonna uh, start giving detect magic. Go. Detecting magic? Yeah. You detect magic for sure. You get a, you, well, I need to hear the sound that you make when you detect magic. Uh, you get a strong boop, boop, sense that there's magic within 30 feet, I believe, is the range of that spell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Back slowly down um, the the walkway. Mm-hmm. Uh, just thinking about that range of my magic. Uh, see if I can get like um, roughly where that sense of something magic might start. It is on your half of that tower. Okay. The tower is 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 70... We'll say it's narrow. It is 50 feet wide. So uh, uh, that that 25 foot diameter range 
So it's not on my walkway, but it's the tower up there. Yes. So I will let folk because that tower. Uh, strangely enough, that tower is magical. Huh. Who would have thought? Strangely enough, it bobs up and down like a top. <laughs> and, oh, wait. and it's floaty in the sky. Is would... this black metal something we've seen before? Is it like uh, like iron? Is it common? Or does it look like something It looks iron-y. unusual. But yes, unusual. You haven't seen it before, but it does look irony. A black iron. Black iron. I would check that walkway before any of us stepped onto it. Well, I propose not to step on it at all. How are we going to go through that door? Well, I know how I would go through it. And Galen appears on the walkway on the other side. How do you describe how do you do that? Yeah, so there's a a mirror shard that I have uh, seated in a little quick release holster in my... Sorry, I'm allergic to hell. (laughs) uh, Up my wrist. And so um, I just flip a little case open and the shard flashes into my hand. And then just it catches the light and suddenly I'm in two places at once. All right. And then you fade out of your original spot and start walking out from the second spot. So I appear on the balcony and immediately prepare to jump back. (laughs) Okay. You appear on the balcony and you get a tiny sense of the movement, but it's almost imperceptible of the tower itself, but nothing else happens. Thon is checking out the horizon after hearing the thunder noises and whatnot and determining if there's some dark weather calamity that is approaching. He's okay. using his spyglass for such a thing. Uh, all right. I'm making a roll. Oh, you do notice, uh, Galen, that there is a lever, uh, a an old rusted lever that is next to the uh, gap in the railing you just passed by. How far across is that, uh, the grate, the metal grate? Uh, eight feet for the drawbridge. Um, I got a little bit of rope. If uh, like I'm probably the lightest of all of us, if like I tie it around me, you could hold the other end, and maybe I could try to walk across. You could just throw the end of the rope over to me, and I'll secure it to the railing on this side of the tower. Cause he's there now. So, well, sure. I'll pull my. I got some rope in my pack. Okay. No. Chuck one end of it. So can I loop it through the railing around us, or is it just a? Is it like more like a parapet where there's. No, you know, there's actual railing there. Yeah, okay. For sure. All right. All right. You, does it feel sturdy? It does. You are a not making expert. <laughs> I'll tie the other end kind of around. I'm going to loop it around and throw it back to you so it's like double. There's two lines of rope going across. Okay. Yeah. So it's 50-foot rope. I'll mm-hmm. tie it around under my arm pitties. And then I'll say a little prayer for me, all right? And then I'll go carefully walk across the grate. Okay, you walk across this black iron drawbridge anybody want to check it for traps first or too late he has walked across as he walks across there's an explosion of smiles from jericho as he gets across to the other side (laughs) unscathed it seemed fine and Derek's already putting down show titles i don't know what (laughs) explosion of smiles smiles. (laughs) i don't know in hell Who's next? Yeah, I'll uh, untie and chuck the rope back out. Just in case. Right. <laughs> Was anything derived from the investigation of the skyline? Negative. Okay. Yeah, I'll just hold on to the rope and let everybody else kind of walk across, holding on to the rope, I okay. suppose. If All right. That makes sense. And then he will cross, provided there's no... You tie that rope around yourself, bud. Okay. Safety first. Oh, Dash just walks. Just, just. <laughs> yeah. Hemlock walks across. <laughs> okay. Like. Hemlock makes it across safely. Dash makes it across safely. Thon gingerly steps on the over to ever. Uh, makes <laughs> it across yeah, safely. Yeah, he's on the rope. Like an elk. And then Yannick comes by, bringing the rope with him, and everyone is safely across the treacherous drawbridge of doom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Ooh, saved I, ourselves. I told you it'd be fine. Indeed. I see this no reason not to be cautious. Lever here? You think it disconnects the I would leave it gate? alone. That one I don't I, that just one I leave do it. Not we trust. burned enough bridges behind us. Just leave it alone. To not literally burn a bridge <laughs> behind us. <laughs> when you see a lever, don't you just no, want to pull it? No, don't don't do right. it. Ash, do you want to check out see if that door's got I mean I do, but Damlock says no. Oh, you mean the door. The door, yeah. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Because you're the door master. I will. I will check the door. I will also check uh, for any traps that might be on the door. Okay, so you go to the other side of the tower. So you have a great view of just almost near uh, infinite rock uh, that you've traveled over. You can see from that distance uh, in that bit of a valley far away, the, the top part of that shadowy dodecahedron thing at the anchor that you were at not so long ago. It's far, far away, a couple miles away. Right. You're on side of uh, the other side of the tower next to the door. Wind is uh, picking up and uh, again, whipping your cloaks around. At the door, it is another black iron door that looks uh, very old. As you approach Dash, you can see there are some demonic symbols, more specifically, Ooh. vague demonic symbols. I would like to decipher said de vague, okay. vague demonic symbols. Galen pushes you out of the way, roughly. <laughs> There's a wolf! He's peeking oh, over your shoulder. For <laughs> what do you got there, Dash? Huh? But it, that looks cool. Just going to feather fall for the next 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you spot... Uh, go ahead and make an occultism roll. That's a really big number. Um, that is going to be a 28. Wow, all right. The images appear to be strange little demonic, like a, a little... Uh, pentagram shape or some strange moon thing and it's all very vague you can't make heads or tails but as you start to look and you almost do like that uh, magic eye picture of refocusing you see the shapes are creating briefly they're changing shape uh, and it's creating uh, imagery of a figure or two or three but it's a figure killing someone else uh, or figures that are cowering in fear you don't know the meaning you don't know the purpose um, but you do see these shapes more importantly, everyone who is not Dash or Galen can see the much more prominent huge slot beside the door that is about the size of a decent sized picture, maybe, I don't know, four feet by three feet rectangle, uh, slotted and curved with the tower. There's a slot, a cut within, almost like a window, but there's stone on the other side. Within it, hang six weathered chimes uh they look uh, like old brass but they're discolored uh, uh covered in a, a red sand or red dust uh, and there are six of them that are unremarkable uh, in any way and on beneath them on the shelf of that slot that they're in there is a uh, hammer that is also old and worn hammer uh, made of black metal and it has a uh, old rusty chain it's connected to with a loop so that it doesn't fall uh, off the tower okay can yannick discern any occultic type purpose for these like or make an occultism roll uh that is gonna be a total of what is, uh, 18 mean, no you do not i would I'll like to look. Uh, look at the images yep. and see those chimes and just like i start thinking music right away and see if the images that are there remind me of um, anything musical, like they might remind me of um, a story or a song mm. that then you like, you know, ding, 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 you know, the, the first, uh, uh, you know, line of a song that's depicted in one gotcha. scene or something along those lines. Uh, okay, make a performance roll. Oh, that's interesting. With plus two. And it's caught. Whoa, that went way out over there. Uh, 21. You discern no song that you know, no story behind it, but you can see that there is some imperceptible, barely imperceptible, everyone else, different slight shape within each of these chimes that they will produce different tones. So the chimes are clearly have a different tonality at each of the six of them. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're hanging from like rusty chains, yep. you said. But there was nothing in the the, the imagery. There's no like imagery that. on them. And no, I meant the on the door. Yeah, the the demonic 
iconography. Nope. That seemed to tie that. Alrighty. Dash, you were checking for traps, I believe. Yeah, and I sent the glyphs that you noticed and pushed me out of the way. Um, the This doesn't appear to be a trap, though it does appear to be a lock of a sort that uh, might be magical in nature. You may want to check for that. It might be mechanical, but I'm guessing that there's a resonance that happens when there's a combination of notes. Bloodwitches and Thave used something a little bit like this before. Uh, he, he was a captain. Is there anything here that reminds me of a sea shanty of any kind that you might know? Um, you don't know hell shanties? I don't know very many shanties, no. <laughs> Not from hell. He was of the shantyless clan. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Sam, no! Hemlock will take a closer <laughs> look at the chimes, though, to see if any are more. I mean, I know they're all pretty, like, rusty and not great looking, but if there are any that look like they've been hit more than the others? Oh, good question. Oh. And no. No? I can't get my CSI kit out? <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of which, though, we have Dash. Dash, you are carefully looking for traps uh, here, there. You're eyeballing things. You're safe. You get your ear close. You touch gently here. Check creases. Check things. You see there is no handle to open this door, no lock to open this door, and there are no traps that you detected what, on this door. What's the configuration of the chimes? Uh, uh, in a, a They're row. all in a single row? Yeah. Okay. The sigils on the door, um, they, 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 you said they're constantly kind of changing. Just right? slightly, slightly morphing. morphing. Yeah. Is there... Is there a pattern to the sigils or are there different blocks of sigils or it's just one relief? It's one relief across the door that seems far less focused and uh, more like it sh It was much more descriptive in the past and it's worn down. Either the magic is faded or literally the door itself has been worn away and eroded. So you can see like, oh, these guys are killing something I can't see and now it's gone away and it it's, doesn't seem as purposeful as you would think it to be. <laughs> That's a really good DM note right there. It doesn't <laughs> seem important. <laughs> um, I think we should use the hammer and try one of these. So it seems that each of the, the chimes makes a different tone. Oh, well, you're the music guy. How about you do it? Before that. Uh, yeah. Just because we've seen these devices knock back others. Yannick ties a rope around um, himself. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to Jericho <laughs> okay. um, and, you know, secures it up just in case, you know, it, there's any sort of impulse from ringing the wrong chimes that would send them off the cliff face, off the face of the uh, balcony where we are. What's the runes? Random thought for you, Jericho. Yeah. Maybe it's far-fetched, but when that big black shape first descended on Tabernary, yeah, it had a definitive sound to it, right? It was deafening, wasn't it? There was this tone that emitted from it. So you could look for that tone. Maybe it could be recreated here. When that came, when the thing came down, was it more of a, a single note drone or was it? Yeah, like that one. Big drone. Yeah. No war drums, right? War drums happened when we arrived, but we did, had, had not heard them since. Correct. Okay. So uh, we got six tonal ding dong bells. Start and, out to, one to, me, to me, that sounds like a song. We'll do should, thing. should have put a pause before bells. Six total ding dongs. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like an episode title to me. <laughs> is the is the tower round or is it faceted? It is round. Uh, are you guys all right? Just if we make one lap and just look for anything that might look musical or story or note uh, before we try something. Okay. Just because yeah, I get knocked off. This looks like that would suck. I got a hold right. of the rope. <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to make a lap at least me just looking for anything that 
Do we, Seems at all musical to me. Do we stay put while you are tied to the rope? And just <laughs> yeah. He can only make it three quarters of the way uh-huh. around. <laughs> Not slip out of the rope and just, for me at least, if anyone else wants to go, totally up. Yeah, just I mean, Yannick's going to travel around that, with Jerry. Yeah, okay, the rope so this pair is tethered, yeah. goes together. I think <laughs> I've played that game on Steam. Uh, the rope yeah, from anything goes. of his, Humbly. just study music for anything that just at all brings back anything of music. All, all right, all. the two of you go around. Story, music, art, anything. You're looking at the tower wall itself. You uh, cross the walkway, the wall, the, the, the pathway, doors. the railings. Uh, even... Like, if I look out, like, oh. a cliff face, That's nice. a cloud. <laughs> no clouds. Just kind of any, anything I, I see. Take a nice, very slow look for anything that might make him think that looks like that could be a clue to ding, 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 da, dong, dong, dong. All right. There's uninteresting and interesting uninteresting news. The uninteresting news is that by the time the two of you make it all the way around, you have found... Nothing of note whatsoever. Ooh, that's a good point. Nope. <laughs> the interesting, uninteresting news is the two of you make it around to the other side. It, you see no one else. It is just the two of you at the door. I was really expecting tension dice. That's, yeah, that's, that's what I was that's expecting too. Interesting, uninteresting news. Let's go back he around. He skipped that. <laughs> Went right to the problem. Um, looking at the door, and from what. Yannick can remember from the runes and the chimes and everything else. Is it identical to what they had seen before? It looks identical. No, no, like no more worn or less worn. Nope. I hope um, we can head back around and find them. Dash. Do huh. we hear them? Maybe they got in. No. Unlikely. Let's head back around. Okay. Okay. And we head back around the way we came. You circle back around and run into your friends, uh, kind of tapping their feet, waiting on you. It's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> we have been gone for 40 years. No, that's not. Hey, we did a full lap and came back to the door and you weren't here. Where were you? What are you talking about? We didn't we move. Did not move. You did not come around. No, we did. You didn't. We did. I, I was right here, you didn't do that. And I was right here, and you weren't here. I'm just saying, if you were going to go around, I would have seen you going around. I would have probably heard you coming, but you weren't here. I called out your name, standing right here at the I door. was going over there, but I wasn't going to follow you, but Yannick was well, with you. Well, you went too far. Then. We are well aware that there is magic at play. Play some bells. See what happens. Um, do I, I'm, I'm going to play the closest thing I know to a little sea shanty ding a ling dong dong on, on the little things. All right, catches, you don't know what notes they're going to produce, so you need to tell me which chime you are hitting with the hammer. <laughs> oh, uh, so sure. Before you strike, Thon okay. makes mention of one other thing. I do also notice that there are six chimes. Yes. There are six of us. Could that have a play as well? Well, that's super creepy if that's true. But one hammer. One hammer. We all also had dreams of various kinds. I don't know if that plays into the mystery of the bells. I want to know I'm how I'm just making us. sure that that is thought of. Anyway, proceed, musician. And Yonic tightens his grip on the rope. Two, four, six, one, three, five. Uh, a little slow it down. You hit number two, the okay, yeah. second chime. Two. And explode! When you hit the two, there is a uh, ringing of the chime. It produces a, a deep gong sound, deeper than you would you would expect, Jericho. But it's mm-hmm. also more subdued. It's not as loud. Um, you're not sure why. Galen, you see an effect... And Dash next to you nods knowingly because he had commented on it. There is a yellowish wave of sound that briefly appears on the door as the chime rings and then it fades away. And it is a vertical yellow line on the left hand side of the door. And as the chime fades, the yellow line fades away. Does the yellow line intersect with any of the 
runes on the door? Great question. The moment he hit that and that reverberating yellow line appears, almost like some sort of oscilloscope style thing, uh, all of those symbols scatter and disappeared like uh, like water, like a, a rock hitting water, and you just see the line. And they did not return when the line faded? They do. They do return. All right, I have to point that out to everyone. Uh, and what? how did I describe that line one more time? Vertical yellow, yellow line. Deep vertical. gong, subdued, yellow, vertical line, left side. Correction. Right side. So sorry. All right. Hit it again, Jericho. A so, different one, a different one. Well, that seemed conflicting, but I will go to number four. Let the bar do its thing. Okay. Number four. You uh, hit number four. Another gong. Sounds the exact same to everyone. You can hear a sl- very slight tonal difference uh, to your trained ear, Jericho, but it's it's like a, not even a, a, a sem- it's a semi-semi-semi-tone uh, of difference. It creates a shape. Another yellow line reverberates, and it's a uh, half circle, half semicircle on the top that dips uh, down. Thon uh, draws upon the wall in the dirt and uh, makes the symbol of Vestrath. Should it match something like this? And creates that H shape. That's probably accurate. And he looks to the musician and the thaumaturge. Have we, like we as players, seen a clear description of how that Vestrathian um, H is drawn? It was on the boat. Have we as players? I have a, I pull out a slip of cloth that I cut off a guard a long time ago in the sewers. And I show you guys that. Mm -hmm. Is an H made of thorns? With uh, like barbs on the top. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of curved. Yeah. Okay. We have not, as yeah. players, Correct. seen it. Only as characters. That's, I've been given this. Like, is it just a capital H? That's kind of a little fancy. I don't know. The vest- <laughs> I can't remember. The the, the Vestrath H yep. that we've seen a bunch of times. Uh-huh. I, I can't remember. Okay, Dash hits you. number one. Just, da ah, Ding! Dash takes it from your hand, hits number one, and it creates a very similar yellow reverberation semicircle on the bottom. And then it fades. Okay, I'll try number three. Number three, there's another dull gong, and it creates a vertical line on the left. That was chime three? Correct. I'll try number five. Number five creates a short vertical line straight down the middle vertically. And I'll try number six. Number six, another horizontal. gong, and creates a short horizontal line across the middle. Does it feel like we need a two, three, six? Oh, we got images. One more down at the end. One more down at the end. Yes, I got. I will. The young lady at the far end. Try a two. Three, six in quick succession. Okay, you press, you hit number two, which creates a vertical line on the right. You hit three before that disappears of a vertical line on the left. You hit six, creating a horizontal line across the middle. And the door starts to vibrate and slowly rotate within the circular wall and open up. There's a grinding sound as it almost quivers a bit and the mechanism slides the entire door in uh, open and you see there is a hallway inside. Well done. Guys, I don't suck at music sometimes. I mean, sometimes I do, but... I think that's the fastest we've ever solved a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly because of Thom, though. He said the look for the H. Elves must be smart. Who's going first? Uh, Yannick will step my, my, in. My occultism is zero, so that means all of this is just mystical guesswork. Just sounded good. Uh, you sure you don't speak Fey? <laughs> sword and shield in hand. 
Uh, Yannick steps into the passageway. Okay. Gets, Donald gets in front. <laughs> Scouts away. I'm already there, defeated the boss. I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> Yannick is in, sword and shield out. It is a little tight of a... You hear Thon. Damn it. <laughs> tight of an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> And you immediately recognize that once again, the spatial concept is not making sense. The inside is bigger than the outside. The corridor goes about 30 feet straight. It is made of a dark red wood paneling that looks very uh, luxurious, like a very fine mansion um, with some tiled floor that doesn't make sense either. There are some uh, lamps that are burning oil as you make your way through and the group is going through you. Those of you that are in the rear, the uh -huh. door is slowly closing. Is there anything, any mechanism to open it from the inside? There is. There is a small little lever, uh, not too dissimilar from the one on the railing okay. before. The railing that would have opened the door without the gongs if Galen had just pulled that lever? I, that I, lever? I don't know. That lever? I don't know. Okay. It would have opened <laughs> a door. <laughs> uh, all right. Yannick, you move inside. There is a smell of incense, some sandalwood patchouli mixture that is mixed with the oil lamp uh, that's creating a little bit of smoke um, uh, as you make your way in. Jericho, did you fill us in on the detect magic earlier? Did you tell us? I mentioned that the tower was magic. You then do. as we enter, as we go through there, I am also detecting magic to see if the positioning changes as we go through the okay. through and, the hallway. And how do you detect magic? This is, I can't remember. <laughs> That's a great sound. What's the game effect that helps you detect magic? Was that a... Uh, uh, it's an innate... Uh, uh, innate... Is it a racial thing? A class thing? No, it's a, it's a, it's a class thing. It's a special ability. Uh, let me find it. Called detect magic? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Another thing he made up. <laughs> Another implement. Yeah, just scoring all these things. Now, now we're double checking everything. Again. Wait, you have a mirror? Are you sure? I was so honest, and you're all giving me shit for it. I don't like it. <laughs> Detect yeah. magic as an innate spell. Well, from what source? I don't know. That's just as innate <laughs> spell. Detect magic. That is all right. We'll just go with that. I don't know where that's coming from, but I bet it does. It's a mirror does sound familiar. Uh, yeah, I don't see it in there. Okay. You are also detecting magic, um, uh, with Jericho as you go. Yannick, as you walk through this 30 foot corridor, it opens up into a circular wood paneled room with a door on the other side. And around you is a circular bench on the right and the left wooden, um, that looks like a expensive country club, locker room style bench. And there are about 20 hooks 10 on one side 10 on the other with about a dozen uh cloaks robed uh hooded uh not robes uh, hooded cloaks uh hanging from there are they all the same they are all the same you have seen them before by people causing havoc at uh jorman's house during the party the cultists, cultists. there some furniture here do you need to uh <laughs> Take a couple whacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's his oath. Uh -huh. <laughs> I shall not allow a chase to live. <laughs> Nobody shall be comfortable in by Backflash to his family killed by <laughs> she lounges. <laughs> they were mimics. Um, I think we should, uh, speaking of mimics, perhaps we should all cloak up. Mm. Do they make cloaks in my size? <laughs> I cut the... <laughs> I cut about two feet off of the bottom of one of the cloaks. His sleeves just hang way far. <laughs> the hood sucked down to here. Mr. Business Person or whatever his name was. I see we have new members among us. <laughs> Height restrictions been he, removed? Galen? I'm Awful sure. short for a cultist. I'm not sure Yannick's going to be comfortable with pretending to be... I think it's against his religion. I think he has a religion. And I think it's... Hey, Yannick, is this against your religion? Uh, oh, he, fell, he fell asleep. What if it gets you closer to stabbing a demon lord in the heart? It's not technically against my religion. I'm not... 
comfortable with it, but it breaks no tenet of my faith. I throw a robe at him. Uh, I, my I, face! <laughs> I'm melting! Um, I very reluctantly put this cultist robe on. Okay. Over the armor. Does it fit him? Does, does, does his cloak fit? Uh, he's got to come up with some sort of tail. <laughs> <laughs> with this big cave for Carahel across his shield and armor, but uh, he does have it over him. I mean, it's 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 going to be a very quick... Uh, it's it's, it's long-range yeah. subterfuge. <laughs> Um, right. Wait, if I sat on your shoulders, uh, so we could put one over the two of us. Getting the idea I was talking about <laughs> earlier, yeah. Or I could sit on your shoulders, because you're stout. I'm, I'm not. I'm really not. Well, I mean, you're you're a little portly. <laughs> he means you like stout and port. Like those are your favorites. <laughs> does, does portly mean thin and weak? It, it's, sure. Okay, I'm very portly with a lot of wine. <laughs> so, being. Is it Weight Watchers or Alcoholics and others? What are we going for? <laughs> yes. That was the first time I've ever been drunk. When you met me, I don't want you to get the wrong idea that I'm often in my cups that way, Thon. I don't think these robes are going to fool anybody. I'll put one on, but like, let's get my. I agree. They're this. standing right there. There are a couple lanterns in this room, four of them, and they all kind of dim at once, and then they return. When we put on the cloaks? Nope. Oh, probably an invisible evil person just entered the room. That has happened. Clifford One of you can seek. I mean, I have a bonus. <laughs> that I'll, is I'll true. <laughs> be looking for, with my liminal fetchling special ability, um, I can locate un undetected creatures using seek within 60 feet. Okay. Oh, uh, keeping that in mind. And so what exits are out of this room? There's just a single door. It is a nice wooden door. One might think at some posh British gentleman's club. Gentleman's club. Perfect. Wow. What gentleman now? Yannick opens the door. All right. Are we in the Multnomah Whiskey Library? Is that where we landed? <laughs> In hell, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna append that to every every noun. <laughs> the door opens with shield arm and sword drawn and ready. Uh huh. Okay. And cloaked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Engage cloak. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, and the door opens. You see, there is a medium sized square chamber uh, about. 45 by 45 feet. It has a uh, uh, beautiful uh, wood tiled ceiling, more wood tile uh, paneling or wood paneling. And this has uh, several uh, chairs that look very comfortable, some cushions. It has a, uh, a couple nice rugs all over the ground. Some uh, uh, There's a table with has some uh, decanters upon it and glasses. And there was something else. Oh, yes. It is tall. Chris is already looking. Tom saves 12 the cult tests. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, the, the ceiling's a little taller than normal, about uh, 15 feet tall. And uh, on uh, one of the walls, there is a door, a serious looking door. It looks to be made of steel. You see no hinges. You do see a handle and you see a uh, strange looking key slot uh, on this door. What do you say serious looking? Like, is it a steel door like the outside of the tower or is it like a very ornate carved wooden door? It is not ornate and carved. It is steel and it is not that a uh, black iron rusted. It looks much more modern for your age. Um, uh, and the handle looks incredibly thick uh, as well. Thon diverts his attention from the impressive door to the wood that is being used in the room and trying to determine its origins. Oh, make a nature roll 21. Nope. Okay. I would like to make sure that we close the door behind us. Okay. It is closed. It's very odd to me in a place that has no trees, there would be wood. Tap, tap. 
We also crossed over a lake that vanished the moment we left the house. I think there's a lot of illusions around here that may or may not be real. Feels very real. But I'll try to pay attention to that. Do our cloaks have pockets? Um, no. Can I make pockets? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go up and look at the door, just see if I can see anything. Um... Other than just the straight flat facade of door and handle on it. That might be present. Okay. Uh, you do... Let me double check. Uh, ba, 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 ba. You see nothing more that I've described except for one thing. On the handle... Hidden behind it is a small little, uh, almost like trigger, like a PlayStation controller trigger behind the handle uh, that you believe is connected to some sort of trap. Oh, I will definitely point that out first to Dash and then make sure everyone else hears as well. Guys, there's a little uh, a boo-boo maker on the handle here. Don't don't grab that or just be aware there's a boo-boo right maker. The that hurts you, I think. Trap? It could be. Okay. Uh, Dash will go ahead and follow up on that and detect. To Is this really the time the you want to okay. correct? I just didn't know what you were talking about. Uh, make a perception no, roll. I thought it was cool. Uh, no, thievery. Uh, th- perception. Sorry, perception. Perception. Not perception. thievery? Per. What did I say? Per thievery. You said both. Perception. Thieveception. I, pref- I prefer thievery, but all right. Uh, 19. 19, you can confirm nor deny anything of this type. Uh, make another one. All right. And another! That's a natural 20. And make another, all right, Chris. <laughs> you win. Oh, that's a natural one. How interesting. I'm going to use a hero point. And Found the trap. Natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, that's a 23. With a 23, you detect nothing at all with what Jericho's talking about. You think he's insane, and you think this is just an easier way to open up. There's some sort of release that just like a, a modern uh, American door, you just click and it opens up. You don't think it's a trap because you found the other trap. Oh. Uh, you see there is a uh, hidden little pressure plate uh, not too far away that you can't believe Jericho did not step on uh, that is going to release something sulfuric in nature that is primed. And you see there is a hole in the ceiling uh, that is ready to dispense said nastiness. And then you got a third roll. Uh-huh. 23. 23. 23. And then the key slot, you get a little more better look at. It is a strange key slot that is, um, you have a traditional fantasy skeleton style key that goes in. It's that thick key with the barbed things that come down. This has two more of those uh, that come swing out in different directions. So it has three prongs that stick out. Oh, okay. Definitely odd. Um, don't step here. This oh, probably my. is fine. That's horrible. And the key is completely different than anything we've built before. The, it's a tri-prong design, but it's it might be multiple keys. But I've, I've never not seen a key that works like this. It's a very, very locked door. You can't pick it? I don't think so. Uh... With the with the pick standards that I have with tumblers, this one moves in different directions. I can't. I mean, maybe you could, but my my no. my picks won't do this. I mean, I could shoot it off. <laughs> yes, you good. Don't step there. Thank you. Galen saunters over to the table where the decanters and the glasses are to see if any of them look like they've been used recently. Oh, uh, make another perception roll, please. It's terrible. Okay. Yonick's taking the time to see if he finds what, based on the description, anything that could be that key that um, Dash referenced. What are, you do, what are you looking for regarding the key? You're looking for the key? Yes. Around the room. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you start looking around the room. Make another perception roll. Uh, 15. Okay. Amok wants to go back to the robe room or the 
cloak room. To, the the enrobing room is what yes. it's officially known as. <laughs> and check there to see if there's any key or anything else of note. Okay. Uh, I'll Hemlock. go help you. Thank Hemlock you. and Jericho return back to there. Uh, Fawn, we haven't heard from you in a bit. Anything you want to do? I am checking, but I'm checking vertically. Dash had mentioned that something was up above that was trap-like. Uh, seeing if there's anything else up that way. Rafters and, and whatnot. Um, okay. You can detect something. There are a series of small holes slightly off above as well, um, and they have a uh, faint, noxious gas scent coming from them. So you can confirm there are two traps connected to this door. There are more traps connected to that door. That <laughs> is a serious door. Back in the... What do we call it? Enrobing. The enrobing room. Enrobing. Now, now we got to go back and officially <laughs> change the title Hooding of this room. room. <laughs> the enrobing room. Um, damn it, Derek, stop writing this stuff down. Uh, <laughs> the enrobing room. Uh, you find um, one thing out of the ordinary. It is not 10 hooks and 10 hooks on each side. It is 10 hooks and 11 hooks with the extra hook looking a slightly different brassy color than the others. Ooh. I would like to investigate that. All right. Uh, it looks like it is not as firmly attached to the walls as the others. Yeah. You pull it, it comes down Scooby-Doo style, and there is a grinding sound that gets a yelp from Jericho. As he jumps out of the way of the middle section and the floor starts to descend, creating stairs, spiraling stairs look, down. Look what you did. Uh-huh. That was uh, very piratey of you. You should go go tell the others. Hey, others. Uh, we, we found a secret stair. Well, not, it's not really me. I gotta be honest. What? Yeah, a secret staircase. Okay. Hamlock found it. Because he's a pirate. His honesty burns a demon far off in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Why is someone speaking so truthfully? <laughs> uh, uh, Dash and I assume Thon. Yeah, and uh, also uh, oh, Yannick. Yeah, <laughs> and maybe Galen too. Yeah, sure. Why not? Galen, okay, maybe you should stay and like test out those traps. See what they really do. Let's see. Well, just how kid, much don't do it. That'd be horrible. Weight is required to trigger these. Who's the lightest? Was going down first. Definitely not him. Yannick is. Yeah, I, I stepped on it, didn't do nothing. I don't think it works. Just, <laughs> Just mean stuff. Uh, Yannick, you head down the. Yeah, describe stairs. this to me first before I start throwing myself down these stairs. Who lights? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. uh, it is tight. Uh, My robe. A very tight uh, stone staircase that is slowly creating the stairs as they go. Um, just maybe a, a couple steps before you, they are taking shape. Uh, and it is not mechanical in nature. It's it's mechanical looking, but clearly magical because you're going down several spirals and that would make no sense in the physical world um it's also really tight so any long sword action will be a minus two uh fighting within this area what about a pokey javelin uh that'll be good all right um then i will stow the long sword and draw the retribution axe now <laughs> javelin all right Jeff. but then any attack you make will have to be made blunt damage of the person right behind you right as you go back to <laughs> Who's number two? Uh, as long as they're short, they should be underneath it. So okay. that should be fine. All right. Um, Let it go dash. Yeah. Yannick is going to travel down with the javelin um, and shield. Yeah, she'll follow behind. Okay. I'll, uh, uh, I'll go after Opalite dash. style. Why am I in the back? Because you... Cause you shoot range. So you can shoot over people with your arrows. Same reason, I'm, in here. same reason I'm back here, buddy. Yes. Once you hear the screaming, just start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> and seal it up behind you. You make your way down these stairs slowly uh, and listening for trouble, waiting for trouble. And I still believe we have two people checking for magic. Yes. Oh, great. 
great. <laughs> Glad the magic is consistent across the realm. Uh, well, I cast mine in Fey. Okay. <laughs> That's the different dialect. You I cast mine in Draconic. You arrive at another chamber. It goes down about 30 feet. You arrive at another chamber. This one is circular. Uh, and there is a, uh, a, a stone pillar uh, in the middle that the stairs uh, have formed around that you step down uh, awkwardly in a tactical position. Like, because you're having, you want to bend down low, Yannick, and see mm-hmm. what you're getting into. Yeah. Uh, you don't see anyone. You hop down the last few stairs. You're in a circular chamber. It has an open door on one side, another open door, an open door on the other side. The other side has a, uh, one's an open doorway. Let's call it the right. The left uh, is an open doorway with a door in there that is uh, wooden with magical glyphs upon it, but it's open. Uh, You can see inside both. There are a couple uh, lamps and a torch on the walls here that are keeping things lit. Another dimness of some of the light uh, happens once or twice as you come in, and everyone slowly makes their way down. And And to the right, is this a doorway with no door? Correct. And and Lauren's looking confused. No, not confused. I'm... The, the lights that are dimming, do the, do the lanterns appear to be normal, like oil-burning lanterns, or are they magical in nature? Galen goes over to look at them. What else would you guys like to do? Um, Yannick is just kind of t- like going up to the, not passing through and staying, you know, a couple steps behind where a pressure plate would be, um, if it were in the doorway, just to see kind of down each, each, Hall, you know, each doorway starting with the left and then to the right. So the left with the open door, yeah, with the magical glyphs, glyphs upon it. Some distance away from that door, you look, you see there is a chamber in size, circular, slightly bigger than this one you're in now, and you see that there, the thing that catches your eye, that there are hanging from chains from the ceiling, uh, hunks of flesh of people. Okay, that's disconcerting. Third of a torso with an arm, a leg hanging from another. Galen's going to want some of that. Mm. (laughs) I quietly convey that with some urgency in my voice. And then look at the other one. Uh, The other one you see is a scriptorium. It is a circular room that is lined with tons of little cubbies with lots of scrolls in there. You would say probably 50 or 60 scrolls in there. There's a a desk as well. Nothing on it, uh, but uh, there for someone who wants to read and a chair as well. Exton took great interest in the blood and flesh of others. At least in the dream that I was in. And we used it to drive to we put it on the sails. It was a dream. But with meaning. How did he know to do that? Where did he get that information? My occultism is zero. I'm guessing he serves someone bigger than him. You know, there's layers like you. He finds someone bigger and stronger and says, can I get a little piece of your power and serve you? And the guy says, yes, you can, but you got to give me, you got to like kill your wife and you got to kill your kid and kill a bunch of other people and pour their blood out all over the place. And if you do, it proves you're yucky like me and I'll give you a bunch of power. (laughs) He's like, all right, I'll do that. What song did you get that from? Oh, there's a lot of songs. Mary had a little lamb. (laughs) (laughs) I I do not know that song. Bard acknowledge is terrifying. (laughs) As much as I want to Um, investigate the scriptorium, we should see what's in that room on the left. You want to go? You want to go into the hanging body room first? Yeah, that's going to be a hard sell. At least a sequence like feels the gravity of the There may be danger in there. My eyes are like three times the size they were before. We need to. Galen's having the nerdgasm right now. Clear (laughs) 
any possible danger first before we take time in the scriptorium. How do you know there's? I don't. Danger That's there. the point. And Luck's going to go over to that door on the left and start looking for traps or anything. Because we'll spend some crazy. time in the scriptorium. We need to make sure this other room is no immediate danger. I guess it won't help you to get a bunch of cool scrolls if you then die. A bunch of cool scrolls want to keep us from dying. I have an, uh, a hero point to give out at this point, and we're going to change things up since we have a guest. We will have our guest audience member, Jill, hand out a hero Ooh. point. Whom would you like to give it out to? It goes to Jericho. It's pure nepotism. Don't pick <laughs> <laughs> but do what your heart feels. Mm-hmm. We also have plenty of dice if you want to take a chance. No, no, no. She chooses. Who are you going to choose? Choose the dice. I'm going to get to the new guy, Thawne. Thawne Gaines. I love you. Thawne <laughs> to gain an extra hero point. All right. You that maxed can... out at three, my guy. Three. You better use them now. Spend them all now. <laughs> uh, you... Yeah. Uh-huh. you detect no traps uh, around that door. Uh, Hemlock and Galen, you see the lamps are normal lamps, but there are three of them. There is a fourth one that is a torch that is odd and stands out. I will further investigate that torch. Okay. Why does it stand out? Uh, it is in an odd position where it's not lit and it is at a lower position angle. The uh, stylishly does not make sense. What? I look out of place to you. Yeah, it's everything. That everything I've seen was out of place for yeah. the last. <laughs> everything. <laughs> He's like at his limits. Yeah, week right to two weeks. <laughs> Looks out of place to me. Hey, Hemlock, see if its connectivity looks like it might be hinged, because it might be the one that opens up the staircase from the bottom. Or it might be a trap or something. I'll go yeah. check the torch sconce to okay. see if it's a trap and or lever. All right, you check for some trappage on there. You detect no traps, but you see there is mechanical linkage to it. Oh, turn it. All right, you're able to move it up into place and quickly snap your head around as the stairs behind you, the spiral stairs, um, descend uh, down to become flat, meaning you have no way back up. There's just a hole there, but then they continue down, creating spiral stairs down. Hemlock, you are so cool. It was your idea. Turn, turn it back the other way. No, no we don't want what's what might be down there coming oh, back no. up. Yes, we, we want do. What's up there we've coming or, down? We've already been there. Have we? I recall a door we didn't get through. Well, sure. A big heavy metal door with traps. I, I'll take the devil I know against the one I don't. You guys it's, coming? It's it's literally, devil, yeah. there's a, there's yeah. a devil. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> we know how to do it. If you want to move it, go ahead. We, and we I need, walk off we need towards where I hear we don't uh, go back. We dash go calling. I move it back into the position it was in. To the original position. Yeah. All right, stairs are recreated going up. Yeah. What? What? what are you going to do? I don't know. Gentlemen or two? We Some look at these kids. rooms. We need to. Gonna come behind you. Thank you. We need to see what's in this room with the bodies first. That is disconcerting, and All right, we I'll need go to... with you. Well, perhaps somebody should I look at the glyphs on the door. Traps, but I don't know anything about these glyphs. I'll take a look at the glyphs, see if I recognize them at all. Um, you may make an occult or arcana roll. Your Can choice. Yannick do as well? Um, yes. Sixteen. You have no idea about it. I don't know what these are at all. And where are these rooms? Twenty-three. On the open door. Going into the left, where we see the bodies. Where we see going the bodies. into the beef gotcha. jerky room. Uh, these are. Please don't ever refer to it as that again. <laughs> these are runes of reinforcement on the door to give it a tremendous amount of reinforcement and structural integrity. Okay, yeah. good thing it's open. Indeed. But uh, why does it need it? Do you have a Do you have a dagger on you? I do. Wedge it into that door. I do. Okay. You wedge it in. And this this area is a little bigger, so I would have my longsword back out. Okay. And I will step forward, being cautious about traps. 
Okay. Stepping forward, and we have a description of a room on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> you see the dark wood panels are left behind from the uh, central room, and now it is uh, circular and stone. Uh, carved into the stone are depictions of hellish landscapes and tormented souls. The center of the room holds a raised dais, and you can see without any roll necessary, you can all identify a large summoning circle etched into its surface, uh, surrounded by runes um, that very lightly pulse a little bit of energy um, to them. Chains dangle from uh, ceilings. Uh, there are four of these chains, um, them holding different chunks of uh, people. And you also get a sense, if you're trained in Arcana or Occult, you, you can make a roll right now. 20 is the target number, though. 29. Whoa. Uh, Galen, the master of the Occult, uh, you get a sense that there is arcane power lightly crackling over the summoning circle. There is no summoning happen. It is residual power. Um, and it could prove beneficial or dangerous to anyone uh, approaching. That summoning circle has been used recently. This power is ebbing from it. How close are these chunks of bodies to that circle? A um, couple feet. Actually, make a medicine roll. Um, 17. That's enough, actually. Uh, it is one person, or was, that was then torn asunder and fell into four pieces. So they were suspended right over the dais. Is the head still there? Uh, head is not visible anywhere. There's blood and viscera on the floor and dais itself, with small bit hanging from one chain, and like I said, a third of a torso and an arm hanging from another, that kind of a thing. Is it too much to hope that this is hexed? It is. Too much to hope. This was some poor soul that used for some evil purpose. Um, Wiring blood seems to be the main component of the magics around here. Yannick is going to start to remove the body from the chains. Great. I'm going to do a little lap. Just look for anything else that might be tucked away on the edges of the room. You see, covered in blood, slightly obscured, is a small scroll case. Mm, totally different than the scriptorium, which just has cubbies with exposed scrolls. See? Scroll for you, buddy. <laughs> oh, thanks. I got it. I'll, I'll peek inside, see if I can recognize what it is. You look inside, it is a piece of paper. Yay! <laughs> is that just a DM question? Is that a big process to figure out what the scroll is of? Uh, if, yeah, you're going to identify. Identify normally takes about 10 minutes unless okay. you have quick identification. I do not. Uh, but you take a look, and it is not magical in nature. It is just a note that someone has written oh, down. Oh, I, I will read the note then. The note reads as follows. Do not approach the entrance to Vestras' lair. His guardians will immediately work to shut down the water spout to his chamber, and you will never get in. They will likely cut you down, and no summoning will protect you. Only through deep meditation can you connect with our Lord. Repeat, I, I please. Just, I just bring that over to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do not approach the entrance to Vestrath's lair. His guardians will immediately work to shut down the water spout to his chamber, and you will never get in. They will likely cut you down, and no summoning will protect you. Only through deep meditation can you connect to our Lord. Pasting that into chat for anyone watching on Twitch. Galen's going to do something maybe slightly dangerous. And again, I don't know if this will work or not, but he is testing his uh, psychometric resonance and uh, concentrates and lays hands on a part of the body. Okay. In an attempt to see the face connected with that 
body. With your psychometric resonance. Resonance. Read psychometric resonance. So gain a vision of a person's face whose emotion is imbued in an object. Uh, yeah, the first part's the touch to get an emotional resonance if there's a strong emotion, and then you can get a vision of the face. All right, you touch, you get a strong emotion of commitment, determination, and fear. You focus for a minute, and you get a flash of a face of a man you've never seen before uh, looking in pain, and you uh, then drop to the ground, um, shaking a bit, and take uh, four points of psychic damage, and once again have to make a willpower save uh, 18 to avoid getting the doomed condition. Oh, God. You should become resistant it's dangerous to world after a while. That's a 19. Oh. And you shake off the sense of dread. Will you Whoa. stop doing that? I, I had to know. I think this is just some occultist who gave his life with nobody what, we know, nobody what, we've seen. What part, what part of you were you touching? His scrota. <laughs> <laughs> Always the scrota. Uh, it's just on the it's floor. The bag to the soul. Yeah. No, on one of the hooks. Oh. Yeah. Well, Hemlock's just going to like rip off a body part and Go. throw it into the summoning circle. Okay, you throw it into the summoning circle and it just slaps and spurts a little bit of goodness and slides maybe a couple inches and nothing happens. Somewhere a viscera janitor cries <laughs> a little bit. Uh, Yannick finishes his task, um, despite his reservations that it was a cultist. Um, con- you know, says something consecrating over the body. Um, and whenever we're done in this room, he intends to burn the body on the way out. Okay. But waiting until we're done so we're not, you know, walking around burning flesh. There seems to be no other exit from this room. Is anybody going to investigate the summoning circle further? See if we can learn anything. Oh, I thought you were. What's up with you today? Listen. (laughs) I do do not want to be here. Are you hangry? Do you need (laughs) need some beef jerky? (laughs) For me, not for you. No? No on the the circle? I I thought that was your thing. I will uh, investigate. So don't you put your hand on it? Yannick steps it? up to the summoning circle to try to derive whatever information he can from it. Uh, okay, you step onto the summoning circle. You feel a... I don't like how you said onto. But. Onto. Uh, you feel a uh, crackling uh, around you, a little bit of uh, energy. And make a fortitude save, uh, 18, or take five points of uh, electrical damage. I'm going to use one of my two hero points, as that was a natural one. And instead, roll a 19 on the die, adding 12, so that would be a, what is that? Yeah, 31. 31. Oh. And you have acquired a temporary spell that you can cast. A level <laughs> nice. one spell of Bane is now Ooh. available. You sense it within you. The strange demonic word you can come up with will trigger it if you so choose. <laughs> of all people. And there is a price to pay that your holiness with that role is pierced right through and you have it clean and have no catch to the spell whatsoever. Okay. What does Bane do? Uh, Bane's 10-foot emanation lasts a minute. Uh, enemies in the area make a will save or a minus one to attack rolls while we're, they're within the area. And each turn thereafter, you can sustain to increase its radius by 10 feet if you want. And to be clear, you said through the holiness of Karahel, I am... The Bane is having, like... Uh, basically, it counteracts any unholiness of the Bane. Absolutely protected correct. Protected from it, so I'm not... You're not negatively connected to it with that spell. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. Otherwise, I will instantly dismiss the ability to do that. <laughs> Dash, come here! <laughs> <laughs> um, let, let me bane you. Do I learn anything from the beyond that from the summoning circle? Nope, nothing at all. And then the energy, that residual energy fades away. Yeah. Oh. 
You decrackalized it. You're glowing. Decrapalized? Decrackalized. Oh, that's okay. Crackle. What did I say? It was yeah. kind of crackling with okay. energy. All right. All right. Now it's not crackling, so you decrackalized it. There is a staircase back that way that goes down. There's and also a scriptorium. Yes, we should investigate the <laughs> yeah, scriptorium. Yeah, we should burn that scriptorium. <laughs> Just um, it might it, have a keyhole. Yep. And as we're finished in this room, um, Yannick pours a little bit of um, oil on the uh, remains of the body. and uh, oh, that, That's going to stink up this place where we are. And lights it on fire. All right. A cool. fire is started as you leave. Dash, Perhaps dash, we dash. shut the door. And we'll close the door. You close the door, moving the dagger. The door closes, uh, and the glyphs uh, disappear. By the way, when you close the door, it looks like a normal door. Okay. And uh, the scriptorium is open, right? We yep. can see the scripts. No door there at all, just a doorway. So follow Galen, who's clearly leading the way. Dash, why don't you take a look at this doorway here? You've been so good at uh, pointing out traps so far. Oh sure. Uh, Dash will step in front of Galen. And uh, check the door for traps. Uh, okay, you check the doorway for traps. You detect nothing at all, and you let Galen go first. Then looks like a door. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, any? There's no runes, glyphs, anything that I can detect. Uh, you want to take time to detect things? It'll take some time and add a tension die if you'd like. How many we got in there? One. Just go. One. No, Five. just go. All right, I'm being encouraged to step through the door. All oh, right. Yannick push, pushes push, them push. through. <laughs> <laughs> just go. <laughs> Uh, reflexively, you go through the door, <laughs> uh, and uh, nothing bitch. occurs as you step into the scriptorium. It is lit with uh, more of these lanterns, still plenty of smoke being emanated by them, and they're just all these cubbies with tons of scrolls in them. You said there was a desk as well, right? Yep. I immediately go to the desk and look to see what's on that. Uh, you see there is a uh, one scroll that is uh, just haphazardly left there, and it's all curled up, uh, as all of them are in the curled up in their cubbies, but this one is on the desk. There's a comfortable chair there to read, uh, and then another oil lamp there for uh, better lighting. Okay. Um, gentlemen, I feel like uh, we should be moving rather quickly. As much as I'd like to stay here all day and read these scrolls, perhaps we can just grab a number of them and see if any are magic. Way. There's also a fire in the next room. <laughs> so I'll I'll look to identify the one that was sitting on the desk um, to see if I know what that one is. All right, you check that one out. It is not magical. It is a note. Okay. Well, what does the note say? The note says nothing. It reads as follows. <laughs> uh it says, respect for the red cultists who always come first and foremost, and beneath them are the high-ranking blue members. Green members follow in third, with yellow members as the last rank of all. Red, blue, green, yellow. Respect for the red cultists who always come first and foremost, and beneath them are the high-ranking blue members. Green members follow in third, with yellow members as the last rank of all. What color are our cloaks? Your cloaks are all yellow. Uh, correction, there is one green, and I don't know who has it, if anyone does. Rollies. Uh, Hemlock took his cloak off a long time ago. It's yeah, I, yeah, I'd say we are we don't need to be cloaked at this stage. So then, Jericho, you have the yellow cloak? Green. Uh, I have a cloak. Is it yellow? Or green, one or the other, I don't know. Your call, make it. It's green, totally green, okay. super green. All right. It's more my color. Everyone's is green, apparently. Everyone's is green. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Huh. Uh, it, Jericho, do you mind if I grab that scroll case from you? I give it to Yannick, so you have to beat him up. That's how I started the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hand it over. I will stuff as many scrolls Level as I can from the kidney. cubbies into the scroll case. Okay. You can stuff a bunch in there. Okay. How, do you want to spend plenty of time doing that? Dash, yes. Dash will uh, scour the room for keys or keyholes yeah. or key cubbies while he's doing that. Okay. Yeah, Yannick's looking for anything religious, religious scrolls, religious tomes. <laughs> it's just like, it's like I, I picture you opening up a scroll. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. I'm standing no. behind him. No. He's catching him for a yeah. big cave. That's uh, like yeah. Thou shalt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not religious. Uh. I'm going to go step out and uh, while they're doing that, pull the 
pull the torch. Okay, you guys hear the grinding of stone. And Yannick uh, immediately spins around and will go right out there. What are you doing? That, that seems pretty obvious, I think. And Yannick will push that back. Okay. We go together. We stay together. We're in the middle of hell. What are you thinking? I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> you opened up a passage to Lord knows where. Well, there was one While the room. rest of us are in the other room. That is foolish beyond measure. The fire We is stay spreading. together. We do not split up at this time. Oh, the conservatory. What are fire. you thinking? Get back in the room. Go get your scrolls. Have a good time in there. Yannick, Stop yelling. That is not something <laughs> that we can just do. Leave the room and open up passages separately <laughs> that is foolish do you understand I, I, do you understand i understand you yelling go get your scrolls you're I, not my dad <laughs> jericho go get your scrolls you need to listen to me i, I heard every word you said go get your scrolls you need <laughs> to understand the peril that we're in and doing that was foolish and not within what this group should be doing. When you just leave and go do your own thing, it's like you're not even a part of what we're doing. It's, it's like you don't realize and understand the peril that we're in. We this is not a joking second? matter. This is not a light matter. I need to pause the scene for just a second. Approaching, Thon approaching... Uh, Galen over here. I've got so many scrolls by this time. <laughs> Just. Does your feeling for what goes around, does, is there emotional impact as well? Because I worry that our champion is feeling the effects of our surroundings maybe a little more strongly than others. Do you sense that? Can you control that? I don't think I can control that. I haven't sensed anything specifically, but now that you mention it, he does seem agitated. And a light bulb appears over Galen's head, and he grabs one of the scrolls mm -hmm. and does his psychometric assessment on okay. it. You detect nothing. What was your Ooh. purpose and intent in doing that, Jericho? We had opened this before, and you didn't get mad. We're, we're going someplace next. Where are we going to go next? We are all in the other room. You left the room. Some five feet away And didn't communicate with any of us of what you were doing. And opened up this passage, which may lead to some infinite danger that we have not yet been appraised of. It's been opened before with us. It's not something new. I didn't open up a door that we haven't opened up before. What were you going to do after the door was open? Were you going to go down it? No. Then why open it? I am. Because it's the next and place Thon we're going. will shift the sconce. Did you, did you scream and yell hemlock when he opened it? The sconce. Because no. we were all together. The sconce we were is, all of the, a party. The sconce has been moved by Thon, and the stairs are creating an and opening. Thon is quickly going down the stairs. Oh, good. Go yell at him now. With the fingers in the air. <laughs> As he disappears. <laughs> And Yannick, you see the elf uh, quickly running down the stairs. Galen runs in from the other room, and there's there's papers like flying everywhere. Like, ah, ah. we need to start understanding that we're in a very dangerous place. And if we do not work together and do not communicate what That's we're true. doing, when we're doing it, and how we're doing it, who would you communicate we with about not... lighting a room on fire? No one. You saw what I was doing. We, I specifically stated that that was going to happen. There were no objections throughout that entire purpose. We I were all the in the room together. All right, Galen's walked down the staircase. I walked Chuck Swift uh, Dash to see if he found anything in his search. Dash, you found nothing in your search. Uh, your, your concerns are noted. Thank you, Yannick. I appreciate it. <laughs> Dash walks out, taps Jericho. We're going down. All right, let's go. Yannick oh, by is, the way, Yannick, we're going down the stairs. Yannick is left standing by himself, frustrated. <laughs> I'm going to be with the group. Don't separate us. 
as the group goes down, he shakes his head and finally follows them. And we will take our break there. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit to see what happens next. All right, we are back. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, drop by inglorysparts.com and uh, join the Discord and say hi and join the rest of the community. We love hearing your feedback. We've got channels for each uh, adventure and uh, we share with us some of our crazy wild thoughts. Uh, there's also a link on our website to our Patreon if you want to consider supporting the show. Just a few bucks get you access to our after show and some one shots. We just did a recent one shot of mazes run by our own Jeremy. Uh, all right, we are back here in uh, our uh, dark tower. Galen, you have left the scriptorium. You have three options. Did you grab the scroll scrolls that you could, stuff them where you can and ran out? Or did you take one tension die worth of time to grab more? Or did you do two tension dice to grab all the valuable scrolls there? <laughs> Oh, do I don't it. think I'm so greedy as do to it. do two tension dice. Well, two. Dash was in there looking. Three tension dice. Yeah, Dash I, was I, busy yeah, in there was as well. Yeah, I looking for the yeah. key if I could find it, so I think I took the time. Oh, okay. Well, then two for sure, then. So you're doing both of the tension dice yeah. being added. Okay, yeah. we have three tension dice added to the tension pool when it gets to six uh they will be rolled and they might be rolled uh before then if reckless insanity is done by anyone you've killed us all <laughs> put them back uh you have acquired uh but, 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 but you can identify things quickly can you not i have assured identification but i don't think i have quick identification oh, okay i thought oh. someone did oh thought someone did yeah uh that was a geary a Geary had that. <laughs> then you have, you have acquired uh, four magical scrolls that you do not know what they do. Okay. It will take some time, uh, about about ten minutes each, to go through them all. Great. And you run down after your friends. Thawne, you were leading the way. Uh, yes, Thawne. A uh, bow in hand. Call of duty your way around corners. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, we have a comment in chat. Moment of silence for a Geary. <laughs> <laughs> Still hurts. Thank you. On stops, sheds a tear. He doesn't know why. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so emotional in Then hell. continues on. It's just, I want to move, but I can't. Uh, you arrive in a almost duplicate-like chamber, central area, with a right and a left uh, door. There is a doorway open with no door on the right hand side. And you see it is a room with some strange things in there. And on the left hand side is a closed door of a nice uh, luxurious gentleman club style wooden uh, door. I wait for the rest of my team. The rest of the group finally comes down. One by one, they arrive with Yannick coming down the slowest with maybe a little bit of a pouty stance as he arrives. I waited. I oh. see. So I'm sorry, I'm writing that down. Can you confirm the right side was just an open chamber? The left has a closed door? Is that that right? is correct. Okay. What do you see, Aguirre? Uh, oh! Spawn! Add a tension die. <laughs> <laughs> Roll them dice. <laughs> See just this doorway, these doorways, this entryway, and that's it. But you all have my knowledge beyond mine, so I'm not going to go forward. Hemlock, you can hear voices beyond the door to the left, and they are rather clear in what you hear. And you hear someone say, but what can we do? The portal only works one way now. We can't return to the city. We're stuck here. We must trust in Lord Vestrath. He has always been there for us. Those warriors defending the city, they defeated our demons. Our Lord is silent. Where is he now that we need him? Lord Vestrath is gathering his strength after unleashing his demons upon Tabernary. His imps refuel his hatred. Now, we will begin the ritual right here. 
to provide our essence to our Lord and give him even more strength. Gather round the table, and we will begin. Um, I silently let everybody know. Uh, am I the only, is Hemlock the only one hearing this? Yes, they just hear weird muffled voices. You're the only one with his ear close to the door. Uh, so I do like a, make some sort of low sound. All right, there's some sort of low sound. While that's happening, uh, Fawn, the open doorway to the right, you see is some sort of alchemical laboratory with beakers and things and, and vials of powders and liquids and all sorts of stuff. Mm. Well, my attention is still drawn to... Uh, Hemlock. All right, you give up on that, head over towards Hemlock. One motion for Yannick to come over Mm -hmm. to the door. And while he's on his way, I'm checking the door for traps. Okay. You called me over. What is it? There's voices on the other side of this door. They're summoning something to make this demon lord stronger. We need to dispatch them quickly. Are we all ready? You hear a, the knocking of an arrow. Okay. All right. <laughs> do I, the do crackle I can... of lightning across uh, Dash's fur from right hand to left hand as he just kind of cocks his head down and nods at the door. Do you spin in place like Sonic? Did I detect any traps or anything on the door? Uh, you detect no traps, no. Okay, so as Yannick gets closer, Hemlock backs off. If only we could pose as cultists. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the robe slung over yeah. your shoulder, right? We don't need that. We have the upper hand. How long will it take to open this door? On the count of three. It's too long. Perhaps I should enter first. I have my I have the cloak on. Go! Wait. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we get attached to that. Spawn <laughs> holds the group up. Dash is up. <laughs> I gotta I'm, let it go, man! <laughs> blue ball in it right I'm there. That, man. <laughs> I'm edgy. <laughs> I'm ready. Door opens. All right, you open the door, and what are you doing, Galen? I have the green cloak on, hood up, and I am just walking through the door, eyes down. And looking to see what I see in front of me. All right, you open up. You see there is There's five people right behind you, not dressed <laughs> yeah. as cultists. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, uh, you open the door and you see it, it uh, opens up into a split uh, double hallway with a connecting corridor between, almost if you're looking down from above, in the shape of an H, uh, which has two other doors at the other end with uh, slots. <laughs> Um, that you can see almost like uh, oversized speakeasy slots uh, in the door. Again, fancy doors, so two doors at the bottom um, and an H-like shape. Uh, more specifically, uh, and then gorgeous wood paneling everywhere as well. And I don't see any people in front of me? No, I nope. see any. just these doors. About maybe 20 feet away are these doors. Okay, I wait for everybody to come through. All right. Is the sound coming from behind one of the doors that's the speaking? You can look. A uh, couple of you can look through one. A couple of you can look through the other. They both look into the same room, uh, and it is some sort of gathering area with a large table. You, As you guys quietly are making your way there, you can see there's about four guys in there, cultist types, uh, that are uh, starting to weave a little bit of magic uh, around the table uh, itself. What color cloaks are they wearing? Uh, they are wearing... A Stand by uh, blue and one blue, the rest yellows. While we're actually doing this, I the shield the long sword goes away and the fish shard actually comes out. So a slightly different weapon. We're dealing with cultists specifically. All right, everybody gather at the door. Second, first, same as the first. Three, two, one. 
Okay, um, you go inside. You all are you all going in uh, one door, or do you want to split it on both doors? How are you going to approach this? Do you want to go oh, your it's like conference room style that goes in there? Okay. Whichever one's closest to the the people that we see in there, are right? They, are they the other door. Okay, that's what I was double checking. Okay. Uh, great. You open up the door, Galen, and uh, the door opens up, and there is a... As uh, I open it, can I say something? Sure. Brothers, brothers, come quick, upstairs with me. Uh, one right next to you turns There's around. A fire. <laughs> <laughs> one of them, uh, not too far away from the door, turns around and looks at you and says, uh, What? Upstairs, right now, there's an emergency with me, with me. He, oh, easily spots intruders behind you uh, and says, Intruders! <laughs> uh, and the summoning, uh, well, not the summoning, but the spell is immediately abrupted and the cultists draw blades and we have a battle on our hands. Uh, activating our battle... And rolling our initiative for everyone. First up, with a freaking 31, I believe that's a natural 20, perhaps, is Galen himself. Ooh, oh, nice. Uh, all right. And so all I see, yeah, can you scroll down and... Okay, so we have cultists... Gathered around the table. Okay. Uh, so I will move to the nearest cultist. Uh, to ha, that's what I thought. So to, uh, top, uh, north of north of that cultist. Yep. Perfect. You charge uh, him. Uh, and uh, I will have my amulet in hand. And I will your new implement my the amulet. new implement. Yes, so this is the amulet I found as we were walking through the demon castle where we destroyed the the chairs. Yes, so I have the amulet in hand, and I will strike at him with my with my longsword. Okay, uh, good luck. And what does the amulet do? So amulet basically offers a, a modicum of protection. Uh, as a reaction, I can use it to mitigate some damage uh, to me or someone else within a short radius around me. Gotcha. All right. So that is going to be a... Swing your sword down. 30. 30 is a critical hit. Okay. So that is uh, 10 plus 8, 18... Uh, do the, I'm sorry, I should know this, but do the pluses double two? 2d8 plus eight? Do I double the plus you as double well? double the dice. Double the dice. So that would be 28 points of damage. And you cut him down immediately and destroy him. Wow. Sl uh, blood splatters the nice cushy chair he had just gotten up from around a desk, and he just crumples immediately. You have an action to go still. Was that a yellow robe or a blue robe? Uh, that was the uh, yellow. Um... I will one more action. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'll stride towards the uh, towards the cultist on my to the west. Okay, there are about seven more cultists still alive. Two to an alcove to the east, one yeah. to the southwest, and about three around the table, and one near the entrance that you guys just came in. Still, so back to my wall north uh, northeast of that cultist that's west of me. Up one. Yep, right there. Perfect. Jericho, you're next. Opening up the door. Where do you want to go? Well, there we are. Where's the guy that's uh, wearing the blue robe? Oh, that's robes? a door, not a wall. That's the blue one? On the far side of the big table. I see. And how far away from me is he? Is that 60 feet? 60 feet. 60 feet. Six zero feet. Six zero. Um, alrighty. Um, I'm going to um, step in just around the corner um, as I come in the door and then just to my right. 
So right as I'm looking at the screen, correct, just to get around the corner away from folks. Just get out of the way? Yeah. So that'll be my first action. My second action is I'm going to do a lingering composition to do a courageous anthem. Try to encourage my friends and say, you guys got this. Target number is 2020. All righty. I'm going to get a number because my numbers all just changed, but I wrote them all down. I got it. Well, okay. Exactly a 20. Nice. Okay. It continues. Uh, so I'll have that for a couple rounds. Turn that on. So you yeah, got a plus one to your attack and damage. And if they try to make you afraid, you got a little a bonus. And then um, for my third action, I'm going to attempt to demoralize the blue guy. Ooh, down there. Okay. Yeah. So he is. Um, I'm just going to look at him and go. We are here to slay you like we slayed all of those demons in our hometown. Okay. Um, make a roll, intimidation roll versus his willpower. I will do so. A 12. A, to a total of 12? Yeah, I rolled very poorly. <laughs> <laughs> he chuckles. <laughs> Kill them all! Wait, that was Johnny Rico. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, all right. Uh, we have our... We're from Mirskan. Uh, okay. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. We have our gunslinger. Okay. With my 10 paces, I'll go five feet in and then uh, five feet to my left. Just okay. kind of stay against the wall. I may mess the door up. There we go. Um. Yeah, I see this blue cultist, and I'm gonna uh, take aim at the blue cultist. Yep. Bang! Shot rings out across the luxurious uh, room. Twenty-one to hit is a hit. Uh, eight points of damage. That's more than bludgeoning. Nor oh, because you have the rune. Have a striking rune. All right, boom, you uh, hit him a spout of blood on his left uh, hip area. Uh, he grimaces uh, and says, that one first. I'll reload and shoot at him again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 25. Is a hit. Five points of piercing or bludgeoning. You get him again. Oh! Uh, and it is the archer's turn. Thawne, still in the doorway. Still in the doorway. Where am I exactly? The blue circle. Way back there. Do I have sight on Senor Blue? You do? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, imperceptibly, to rangers only of high class, you see a little wisp of, uh, some movement as he is now my hunted prey. And I will take uh, the shot on him. This is... Just a regular shot? Hunter's aim. Hunter's aim. Yes. Okay. Uh, this will add plus two to the roll. When you focus, this takes goodness. two actions. Yep. This will be, so this will be all of your actions all then. Actions. So you Good. mark them, and then you take extra time to line it up. You're getting a plus two to hit and ignoring any concealed condition. Correct. Uh, that is 20 even. 20 even is a hit. All right. That is 6 and an 8. Sorry, I'm still new. 6 and an 8. He suffers 10 points of damage. Okay. Uh, he takes a big arrow uh, to the chest and is still standing, but is bleeding uh, all over um, and is messed up. Speaking of all over, is Yannick. Where do you want to go? Um, what will 50 feet into the two moves get me um, trying to get to that cultist to the northwest there? Is that 50? 40. Um, yeah, I'll take that 40. And then I will actually, uh, I'm going to trip. Actually, I'm, I'm going to be five feet back from him and use my the reach of the weapon and trip him oh, with okay. the fishard. 
All right. And I believe that's an attack roll. Uh, trip is, um, it can be athletics as well. All right. Trip with that athletic would be an athletics skill. Roll. Athletics roll. Uh, that is going to be a 30. Uh, th- yeah. <laughs> you miss. <laughs> Action trip. Uh, attempted athletics versus his reflex DC. That is ah. a critical success. Okay. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Your target falls, lands prone, and takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage. Excellent. Oh my god, I need a d6. Uh, that would be four. All right. Oof, he drops. You, you you drop him awkwardly on the chair. He's like bent backwards over the top of the chair. I hate that. Uh, and right that boots. is my three moves. Okay. Uh, we have Dash as our last hero to go. You Wait. actually get the fight! Yay! Yay! <laughs> it's new! Um, how far away is the blue cultist from me? I see him he's a straight line ahead. Is that 60 feet? Because it was 60 feet for everybody else? Just need to make sure. So much. Uh, by the way, while this is going on, uh, critical hits with Pathfinder is double damage, not double dice. So it should be perfect. double modifier. Okay. Good to um, know. But not double the crazy yeah, deadly thing they have. Yeah. Uh, Sand kind of blasts off of uh, Dash, off of his top of his head, off of his fur, and blasts out and around him as he activates his impulse and fires an air shot as a blast straight through at the blue cultist in front of him. For... 21 to hit. 21 is a hit. Fantastic. Which am I doing? This is the one action range. There it is. So I have to roll. Sorry, this is my dice change a little bit. Uh, for air, it's going to be uh, four points of slashing damage towards him. And which one was it? That was just a blast. The two, oh, and the, the blue cult is so straight in front of me, so straight south. This one who's been hit repeatedly. Correct. Okay. Uh, four points. Four points. You finish him off. Nice. Nice. So slicing him through with with the air blast that just kind of cuts him down. Not just the last bit of as energy he has it, he drops in a final gasp. And also, audience member Jill gets to hand out a hero point. Who's going to get it? Hemlock. Woohoo. All right. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Hemlock gets it. Because you're not on a microphone, so I'm repeating what you say yes. so that everyone else knows. Uh, Dash is then going to power up his Thank boomerang in a, in a whole new way, where it's going to start uh, swirling around him, but it first comes under his feet and carries him forward. So I'm going to move forward 15 feet. Moving forward 15 feet? Right behind uh, where Galen is, I believe. If you don't mind, I'm hoping to line up a couple of cultists. When you get a chance, Derek, I, I, I'm trying to see if I can get myself a little bit further uh, down and in with a 15-foot motion. Is that 15 feet there? Yeah, that looks 15. Awesome. <coughs> and, oh, yeah, I can't turn the corner. I'm right next to you. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire an aerial boomerang the other direction, so away from where uh, Yannick ran in, so to the east side of the room, at that guy right over there. Correct. Okay. Basic reflex save. Let me confirm that. And it's a 60 foot range, right? It is. Puts it right on the other side of him. Reflex save. Basic. What's his target number? 21. Because he rolled a big 27. What the shit? So, uh, with that, he, he's successful. So he gets half of it. Okay. Which is. Dang, that was a really good roll. Four, seven, ten, eleven points of uh, slashing damage. So it's like five. Five. Uh, whip there around. He is shredded just a little bit. I believe that's it for you. That's it. Uh, it is ooh, his turn. He charges at the closest, which is Hemlock. Oh, and it takes him two actions to get there. And he swipes with his dagger at the gunslinger. Frickin' A, you can take a step or a reload action uh, if you would like right now with a yeah, critical I'll failure. I'll take a reload action. Dang. Are you sure? Yep. Because you could step. 
Oh. <laughs> maybe a, maybe it's, a trip. It's, the cultist just stumbles in front of it and you just reload. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> There's a cultist to the southwest who gets out of a nice luxurious chair and he goes over to a brazier and takes out one of the daggers you have seen before in your adventures and plunges it into the brazier and starts mumbling some incantation and you see a strange purple summoning mist starting to appear there. Uh, he Ooh. is done. There is another cultist. He is going to run at... Oops. Nope. That's a light I just created. There is another cultist. He is down the east side. He is going to run also to the closest, which is Hemlock. Um, walks up to you, should have stepped, and goes to stab. <laughs> uh, That's one. <laughs> Hemlock with a 19 to hit. Nope. Okay. You dodge out of the way. There is one next to Galen. That cultist, untouched right by the entrance, is going to do a fanatical frenzy. <laughs> and says, Vesrath! And slices at you. He is fatigued, so he has minus two to his armor class, but gets a bonus to attack and damage rolls for his next, well, forever. Here comes two attacks. Here comes, there it is. 11 is a miss. 13 is a miss. Oh, so frustrating! As he swings <laughs> repeatedly. I'm new here! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just an intern. <laughs> this was supposed to be orientation! No. <laughs> There's a guy on the other side of the table who opens up and starts chucking multiple daggers across the room. Oh, and no. he's going to throw it at uh, Jericho, all three. Uh, oh, shoot. So oh, he throws one, it misses, and he drops the next one because it was a critical failure. <laughs> nice. Then grabs a third one, his Best third straps, action. Finest. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Blue cloaks all. Really, guys? Uh -huh. Hey, they're white collar cultists. They're not used to fighting like this. He chucks the dagger, and it's he did not go in fanatic stuff. 20, 21. But the range, I believe, is minus two. Per, he's going to do a 19 to hit you. Um, no, that does not. All hit right, me. hits the wall clumsily nice. behind you and misses. That leaves a bent over guy next to uh, who got bent over the chair. He has to spend an action yeah, to did. get up mm -hmm. uh, awkwardly. He steps off the chair and closes in on Yannick, and then is going to two actions. Going to foolishly trigger his fanatical. <laughs> giving him a minus two to his armor class at the end of his turn. Uh, we are back up at the top with Galen by the entrance. Oh, yes. So, as a free action, I am now able to switch between my implements. So, the amulet goes up the sleeve, and the mirror shard appears, and I will appear behind this cultist. So, I'm in two places at once, and I will run him through with my sword. Okay, he is off guard. I'm taking two off his armor class. You just... Totally duplicated him like that. Whoever just did that, that was super dope. It did look nice good work. and smooth. It looks really good. I'm going to burn a hero point and re-roll that sucker. <laughs> no, no, no. Why? Over Why? Here. What was your roll? Three. A three. You might have still hit him. Yeah, yeah I a 17. Four. Gonna... It's close. That's, good, That's better. That's a 28. 28 is a critical hit. Okay, so that is really bad damage, though. Uh, three, four, plus eight is... Uh, 11, 12, 13, 26. 26, you cut him down instantly. Did you say 26 damage. was bad? <laughs> I had a three and a one, but I forgot about my plus eight. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> what else you got? Uh, then I will... Um, yeah, I'm going to run as far as I can to the southwest from towards the summoning circle. From which position? From the one closest there. Yeah, okay. the one that I just up here then okay uh west around the side of whatever that table is oh, I did the wrong or book or stool or whatever that is i go for it now grab it derek see if that works cool that'll work for me okay emlock got two cultists oh, on goody, you goody freshly reloaded uh, jericho jericho oh did i skip you yeah, you did. I did. Sorry, we got yep. the initiative messed yep. up a little bit. That's quite all right. Sorry, Hemlock. You're fine. Because uh, I'm going to try to help you a little bit. I'm going to cast um, uh, uh, two actions, electric arc cantrip, 
DC 21 basic reflex the two guys that are at hemlock so just uh, he cups his hands together and blue and white electricity comes between them and they cast two bolts of lightning out at both the guys are right there across nice they both have dc 21 basic reflex all right Whoa, dice with everywhere seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen thirteen That's damage cool. the closest one succeeds so he takes half six damage uh no, so six go. or thirteen uh damage. that is incorrect Second one critically failed and is obliterated and shocked oh, uh, and drops to the ground, twitching for 20 something damage. Uh, and 26. 26 and drops in a barbecued mess. Um, and then uh, the guy that is right there, I will try the same demoralize against him. Uh, this was a different guy? Different guy because the first guy's dead. Yeah. All right. Make an intimidation roll. And I'll just go. We're going to do the same thing to you that we just did to your buddy. And uh, I'm not good at these, but it's something to do there. So pleasant, yet so terrifying. <laughs> I'm uh, 13. Uh, <laughs> he shrugs. He doesn't even hear you. He shrugs okay. that off. Hearing you, though, is now. I should probably train that skill. Hemlock. <laughs> My man Jericho. Untrained. Oh, it's untrained? Yeah. And oh, freshly reloaded. I'm just going to yeah. put this gun that would get really in the middle of this guy's chest. That would be. Blast away. Next level. There you go. Um, little gnome Thirty-three. That is a critical hit, yeah, you and sure he did. is dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blown apart it's... with the very round he helped instill into yep. the gun. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then let's see where we. Got? I'll let you choose which chamber it goes into. <laughs> I think Yana can take care of that one. I will just move uh, thirty feet south and reload. Do you tell him thanks for the reload as you shoot him? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Actually, I'll do that, and then I'll do a rock and tour reload to that guy. Oh, all right. Uh, just right there. I think it's an uh, intimidation yeah. roll. Showing Jericho how it's done, perhaps? With a 12. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this Jer is intimidating, what is Jericho's Jericho. What's Jericho's response to that? <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how it's done. That's, that, that's what I did too. Yeah. Still in Twinning. the still in the doorway <laughs> is the archer thon. What are you doing? Uh unmoved and focused on the blue cloak fellow. Uh he long He's dead. He is dead. Then the mark moves to the furthest away yellow cloak wearing individual. Okay, that is the one um to the southwest, up next to the gassy thing. Hunter's aim again. Taking shot. That is a 27-29 hit. Uh, is a critical hit. Critical hit. Nice. That is... 15, 30... 4, 5, 35 points of damage. Yeah. Jeez. One arrow flies. Uh, with cover provided by Yannick, you still get that critical hit. Arrow goes whipping right past Yannick and gets the guy <laughs> uh, in the back of the skull, and he drops. No, he does not drop. He gets pinned to the luxurious <laughs> wooden paneling wall, his body hanging there limply with his head pinned to it. And if it were to matter, the, um, uh, the hunter's... Mm -hmm. The marking uh, ignores light cover. Oh, okay. That is my turn. That's one, two, three action. Oh, you did the precision thing to get precision. that happening. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Yannick. As the cultist down to the southwest dies, the one that was performing some sort of something, presumably summoning, does the energy involved in the summoning dissipate? No. Uh, Yannick charges to that spot okay then. uh what is the movement as you move the cultist right next to you does an opportunity to watch you go by without being able to do anything mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the total two movement looks like okay um and then getting there the there's a dagger in that yes brazier um i will uh <laughs> pull the dagger out okay you pull the dagger out you take one point of void damage mm -hmm. and the dagger then disintegrates as you pull it out you're holding on to a hilt and the energy around it fades away okay 
And that is my turn. All right. Well done, Yannick. Thank you. We have a rat folk by the name of Dash. That's me. There are two cultists left. Dagger thrower and chair toppler. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I threw myself in a diagonal line, so think of it as a 90 degree angle, not to get in between them, but to actually go straight to the west to get uh, the two of them to line up. So you have it almost exactly right. So just move down a little bit close, a little bit further east. There we go. Make an, Try to make a 90 degree angle from where I'm standing so that we can create the line. Is that 30 feet? So 35 feet there. So I don't need to actually move. I'm, I'm not, okay. not going to be running through them. That's, that's not a terrible idea. Um, what would it take? Let me double check something here. Lightning dash is oh. two action. Perfect. Uh, so here's what Dash is going to do. Dash is sparking himself up with lightning. And in doing so, the aerial boomerang uh, dissipates from where it is and appears again under his feet and pushes him forward another 15 feet. So I have a 45 foot movement for one action, which I'm going to get myself to line them up exactly as I'm just kind of running up forward as, as the, the lightning starting to curl up and the hair starting to stand out on end. And as soon as I line them both up like a pool shot, I'm then going to flash right through them as a bolt of lightning. Okay. Using my lightning dash. Your lightning dash. I think you can get them from that angle, one space back there. Derek's working his magic to there. And then you, how, how much distance does it cover? It's a, it's a 30 foot uh, run. I don't think you're going to be able to get both. So from where I was, if I should be able to move down and closer to the first one so that I can run through the two of them because they're not 30 feet apart. Okay, so you want to be down here? Yep. Can you I... can get them, yeah, just like that. Just like that. Okay. That's it. All right, you race across and lightning is left in your trail hitting both remaining cultists. What the hell happens? Depending on how fast they are, they have a basic reflex saving throw. Okay. 20 and 21. Okay, so uh, one fails, one succeeded. Okay. Which means that they... Make sure I'm going the right guy Lightning. Here. This one and this one, because there's two. It is a total of 16 <coughs> points of electrical oh, damage. That destroys the guy who was the chair toppler. And then uh, I guess the one who made the, the save... Takes eight. The 21 got eight. Okay. Done. That's it. All right. Uh, Dash is done. That leaves that last cultist <laughs> with the many daggers. He spins around and strikes at you. Ah, lightning still crackling over him. He has not been into his fanatical frenzy. He gets into it Arrgh! and then slices at you twice. Dash is cut and missed. You are cut with a 26, I believe, as a hit. That does hit. And you take seven points of piercing damage. <laughs> Oh, no. And that was his action. No, 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 no. This may change everything. Nine points of piercing damage. Well, now... He's I've frenzied. Only got 57 left. Galen. I uh, 25 feet towards him. Okay. And I will... say to him yield or die like your brethren Lestrat's power is weakened he's next to fall there's no need to die here I'll never yield and he goes to stab dash more okay then I step in and stop strike. making him yield <laughs> you could get blanky. Uh, I don't think we're going to need that um, that is a 26 26 is a hit. Uh, four nope. is a critical hit with his fanatical craziness. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, that's good. seven and eight is 15 doubled is 30 plus you that 32. Slice him in twain and leave a chunk similar to what they left in the summoning area up above hanging from a chain. Yannick's going to burn it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Burn it off. <laughs> Put it right in the brazier right there, right? The well, brazier. Struck him right in the brazier. It yep. is quiet. 
you still see their uh, little glasses of wine and their wonderful little meeting that they were having just moments ago <laughs> that you have all decimated. A couple slices of birthday cake. For them. <laughs> <laughs> It says happy birthday, the Harry. The ceremony uh, they were yeah. doing. But the a large birthday cake that's slightly moving, going, do I come out now? Yeah, really. Is it over? Somebody's one-year anniversary. It's a partially open present of something really cool. It's a green robe. It's a green robe. So close. It is hell after all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, Hemlock starts looking around the room. Uh, yeah, okay. starts checking the bodies. All right. Uh, looking around the room, you see it uh, has uh, two, you believe, uh, a rather expensive bottles of wine, if you would like to take them from uh, hell. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, you also see, see nothing, nothing there. You see that these, uh, braziers that they have, uh, have some of the coals that are arranged in different colors that slightly match some of the symbols from the summoning circle up above, uh, which is why the guy was able to very quickly get a summoning going with his dagger. Okay. Uh, and that is all you find hemlock. And there's a separate little alcove room. Is that correct? Off there to the right? Correct. I'll go peek over there. Uh, all right. And Dash, you were doing something? Checking the bodies. Um, all right. Uh, Jericho, you look around there. It just looks like a cozy place to uh, sit down and relax, which I believe two people were trying to do until you guys burst it in. But there's nothing of particular interest there to find. You see the room uh, doesn't have much of interest either. Uh, and Dash, you check. They have a couple more of those uh, daggers that you guys have run into before. Uh, and the blue robed guy who i believe was in this chair area here he does have something of interest dun, dun, dun. uh where is he at there he is he has a chain hanging around his neck i assume he still has a neck and <laughs> Uh, from that chain is hanging a kind of longish ivory piece that is four-sided. So kind of long, maybe about whatever that is, five, six inches long, uh, four-sided. Uh, and then each side of the ivory piece has colored symbols uh, carved into it. Kind of like a key type thing? Um, no, just a longish rectangle um, of four sides of ivory with uh, symbols on it. Uh, Dash will take it. I'll okay. put it in his mouth and we'll investigate it later. All right. Um, you've already scanned the room. I didn't. I found some wine we could enjoy whenever this no hellscape key? is done. I did not find anything else. Ah, there are other rooms over here. Let's let's check out the other ones as we do that i want to look uh to see if there's another brazier in like the middle room to do any action with stairs you see there is another torch same as the one upstairs yep where's the onic at <laughs> he is back <laughs> in the main room the slaughter room you were just at on a turn it Okay, you press it down, and there is a grinding sound. Yonic, you hear the grinding. Charge grind is out ready to yell at people. <laughs> Jericho, what did you... Oh. Where's Jericho? <laughs> Get, come here. I'm going to yell at you. Get into this room. Uh, and the stairs uh, move from the upper section to then descend down below to create a lower section. Okay. Was this the only room on this level? Uh, no, negative. there's no there's chemical the room. Right? Yep, like alchemy... Yannick, I've got some summoning knives, and I'm going to give you the two daggers. These are something you've been interested in before, and every single time you try to pick one up, they've always been broken or falling apart, because I don't think you have an intact one. Am I right? That's true. I, I have been interested in just trying to discern more of them. You can summon your own demon now. 
pass. <laughs> Yannick, can I, I take a look I at one of those daggers? I think that's what he wants to do. Flippy the dagger. I'd like to... to well, I'll hold on to her at the time being. Okay. More stairs? Or are we checking Good the other room? room? check the other room first. Yeah, we should the, do the, the alchemy room, right? Okay. The bubbling. Yeah, you check the alchemy room, and I'm assuming with a little bit of effort from Jericho and Galen, you are able to zero in on one, two, three, four magical potions whose type you don't know unless you want to spend quite some time trying to identify them. I'll pocket these and move on, gentlemen. Do they look like the healing potions we've used before? Definitely not. Sweet. <laughs> Some of them might even look the direct opposite. <laughs> healing potions in hell. <laughs> All right. Let's see down. Thon looks at Yannick and puts yeah. his foot one step <laughs> down. First. And goes down the stairs. All right. You head down these stairs. You are quick down the stairs and boom, smack into a cultist in a red cloak. <sighs> and he says, oh, what's, watch where you're going. And I walk past him. Okay. Uh, you are in another central area. This area has uh, two doors. One is closed with a door there. Uh, another is open. Uh, with the open, you see there is another raised dais room, but it has an arch uh, with light. And there is another cultist uh, in there uh, who is uh, 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 taking off his cloak or putting the uh, the hood off, uh, off his cloak. Um, and uh, walking into the room. Just the two of them. Just the two of them? So he's not up the stairs? They are not touching the stairs. They are in the lower area. Oh, they're in the lower area. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm... What's the meaning of that? I'm... And where is your robe? It's upstairs. I should probably get it. Go get it. I... About this time, I think Yanni could be arriving for sure. Are you coming hands. down or are you yeah. backing up? I'm walking up. You run into Yannick, who's still out of view, with uh, probably a javelin in hand. Yeah. I guess javelin and shield, yeah, if we're going down the stairs. The father favors the silly one. <laughs> I have bumped into two downstairs. The higher level of the, the higher ranking of the ones we've seen before. Let's dispatch them quickly then. I would say so. And I'll be right back that, though. I need to grab a rope. What did that note in the case you found say again? Uh, it wasn't. It was in the scriptorium. Red cultists are first. Blue comes second. Uh, green. No, the one Jericho the found. One. Yeah, you got to do the deep meditation thing. You yeah, saw some of do those. Not approach um, the entrance to no, Vestra no, Flare. No, no, no. The guardians will likely cut you down. Um, we'll immediately cut off his water spout too, yeah. and then we'll likely cut you down. And you will never get to him. Mm -hmm. So what was your question? We don't know what form the Guardians take, right? No. I, I, bel I believe those instructions were for the cultists. Hey. The people who work here. Not for us. Uh... Could I have let's... marked the guy I bumped into? Right on his forehead? Uh, <laughs> no. No, okay. Because it always involves <gasps> you! <laughs> are we taking are we, these guys out or what? Yeah. yeah, you guys Let's are go. all jammed yeah. in a tight line on yeah. this spiral stairway. What's the deal? And they're lightning dash. <laughs> <laughs> Hemlock, which way are we going? We're going down. We're going to kill well, these guys. Let's go. Yeah. Um, I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> go. Vaughn uh, have... goes in the room. I can't find my robe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Make a shot. Uh, he is marked, and I will do the hunter's attack. All right. Take a mark. Your other two actions are plus two. What kind of bonus is that? Does it say? Is it it's circumstance? circumstance. Yep. Then that has been changed to a surprise plus four bonus to the guy. All right. We'll do that. 
Blah, blah, blah. Hey, blah, blah, blah. What is that? That is that. Hmm. Do I want hero points? That? I got a, how many hero points? That? You got so many hero points. I know. I need to Do spend this stingy. one. Reroll this. I'll take the reroll. I will take the reroll. That is 28 total. Is a critical hit on the red robed cut. That's going to give him cultist. owies. Thank you. Thank you. Robes and the hemlock, that means things that hurt and the injuries that hurt. Extra D4. Math, math, math. <laughs> math rocks. Why? He is dead. Arrow straight through the heart. Oh, oh, oh. And he rocks? drops to his knees. Do you have a problem with my cloak? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the I other... want your cloak. <laughs> The other uh, cultist says, "By Vesra!" and draws his dagger and comes charging and gets two attacks before anyone else can do anything. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me bring up elite level seven oh, cultist. Sorry, did you say elite level seven cultist? Thirteen hey, to hit and eleven to hit. No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> Clearly not. It's a sidestep to the left I, and a sidestep to the right. Exactly that. All right, I believe Yannick was itching right behind yeah. you. Yeah, um, and knowing we were going to go into the room, I would have the long sword. And okay. immediately, in hand. while he's doing this, he sees Yannick and he just ducks. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yannick, one action to get into position, yep. second action to attack. Uh, that is going to be a 20, 29, 30, 31 to hit. Is a critical hit. And I have a striking rune in that, Ooh. so that is going to be, uh, let's see, 10 plus, boop, 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 where is my new damage with the long dead sword? Is what it, it's He's dead. Cool. Yeah. Um, 10, 14, 28 damage. And you destroy him. It's swinging right over Thon's head. His head not Thons, the cultist oh. topples <laughs> and rolls across the ground. I told you to stay with the group. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get a complaint from me? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, what is in the room? Uh, you are in this entrance area, like I described, and um, you've got a closed door and then the open door that this second guy just ran in from. I'm sorry. So there's just Same. like the bottom of your landing stair, there's a yep. left and a right? Yep, left and a right. You said there was a lights, there were lights above one of the doors. It was glowing or something along those lines? There's a light coming from the open doorway on the right. Ah, from the open door. And from even from here, as you all come into the central uh, room, you can see the room on the right uh, has a raised dais, similar to the summoning area, but has different no symbols on it. And instead has an arch across it that has a blue light, uh, like a portal between the arch. I will just remind everyone of what we read. And what I heard, the portal only goes one way. We cannot get back. Well, they may have been talking about the portal in Tavernry that we destroyed. Or they the said we destroyed. cannot return to the city, is what they said. Right. I, I, I don't. I'm not gonna. I don't know that we have a way back as it is. I know. You guys fucked us all. <laughs> and I'll walk over to the door of That's the... That's fey language. <laughs> the, uh, with the, the doorway with the door. Okay. And look inside. All right, you open the door, and inside you see there is a uh, simple-looking storeroom with some crates and some barrels, and then a trap door on the floor. A metal, uh, old-looking... I'm uh, oh, sorry... The black iron that you guys had before, trapdoor, um, on the floor. I uh, poke around the barrels, or is there anything of note? Uh, you see just some basic supplies for the cultists here, some foods and some uh, drinks uh, to keep them going. Okay. I'm checking the bodies of the cultists we just killed. Uh, okay, uh, normal uh, stuff of their daggers, no coins, no valuables. You do see the red guy has a strange-looking key upon him. How many tines are on this key? It has three different ones that extend out. Gentlemen, uh, I think I found the key we're looking for. Well, I'm going to peek, just look down that grate, see if I can get any idea of what that trapdoor grate might head down towards. Trapdoor? 
Okay, not a grate. You just got to open it up and look down inside. Oh, I thought you said that same black metal grate. Oh, yeah. it's like solid. Yeah. It's solid. It's like the, the door entrance of the tower. Sure. See, uh, is it locked or anything? You go over to it, and yeah. it is not locked. Just got to take a little piece. Traps! Oh, no. You do not check for traps on the trap door. Nope. Uh, you <laughs> peek inside. It's in the name. <laughs> uh, you peek inside, and you see there is a uh, rickety wooden uh, set of steps that goes down into what looks like a cave. I'll... I'll, I'll... Kinda. I'm right there with you. Let's, I was, let folks know. Yeah, well, this was we got another here. level down way here. To like a cavey kind of place. Like we, a stone cave? Yeah, like a cavey cave, cave, rock cave. Dash is very interested in being in a stone cave. And we haven't been in that other room yeah, we yet. Should, we should try that other room. And I want to go back to the main room. Is there a, a torch sconce that looks goofy? Nope, four lamps. All right, let's check the other room real quick, the portal yeah. room. Okay, you guys go in there. You see this portal-looking thing. There are some uh, coat hooks here and some uh, smaller benches here, but they are not in use, and nothing looks unusual about the hooks. The portal is giving off this blue energy between it and a weird crystalline, faint, magical sound. Hey, should we throw one of those dead guys through this and see if he goes somewhere? How would you know where How he goes? Know? No, we just know if he does go somewhere. It's a does portal. Go away. But if it's a one-way portal, then I see what he's saying. that It may not go out. It may be only things coming in. Um, yeah, I'm, it may not even work. Like, I don't want to find out if it works by me walking through it. Because A, I'd go somewhere bad, and B... He raises eyes and eyebrows over at Yannick <laughs> behind him. But if we if we throw someone through number one, we just find out if it does actually, if it really is a portal and it sends anyone anywhere. So I upgrade to a red cloak um, off of one of the guards that killed, and I grab the hands. Who's got the feet? Yannick will grab him. Okay. One. Two. Two. Three. <laughs> You throw, and the guy hits the magical portal and slides down it uh, as though it were a solid uh, piece of stone wall. Okay, now from the other side. See, we learned something from that. Okay. Uh, you did very good, Jericho. Same yeah. effect. Slam. Thank bunk. you. Let's try them both at the same time. <laughs> Cut them in half now at the same. <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious. I've seen your abilities would half of you go through with your mirror? I don't or think anything's going through this portal. I think this is the portal that I overheard the conversation about could that we, would go back to Baren, go back to home. And or come from Tavernry, right? Yeah. At least. But it, what if we closed it? What if we shut down this portal as well? That Colin way walks nothing away can come back. A cultism is zero and has no part of this conversation. Oh, How do you know what that means, bro? <laughs> I am super you even curious, a cult, bro? You even a uh, Mr. Galen. <laughs> Mr. Galen, if you made like Galen B, and Galen B went through the portal, but Galen A stayed here, do you know if Galen B could like see what's on the other side of the portal? It's still me, man. <laughs> it's all me. Yeah. It's always been me. <laughs> now, I understand, but so. Have you seen the prestige <laughs> so, so galen b you could look and see what's on the other side and if it was yucky you could just poopity poop back to your exactly <sighs> you but galen i don't can you do something like that i don't know i don't know for sure Galen, you know that you cannot you need line of effect to wherever you're going and you don't you have even have to line see of, it you don't even yep. have line of sight no you need line of effect you uh -oh. have to be able to see and and move. Yeah, you it. need like a couple inches of air to get to whatever you're trying to get to, and okay. you don't have that. Okay. There is a new we'll smell in the room as Thon has found the larder and he's cracked it open, is eating some of the supplies. All right. Well, you're yes. eating demon food. Shall we continue are we down? Are we going down or are we going back up here? to the door? I now say we, we have can a key. Continue to see what's down and then go okay. back up. Real question, though. Can we dispel this? Is there a way to break the portal in this end? Uh, I don't think I'm powerful enough. Is there any obvious 
Like a lever. Switch. No or lever, <laughs> no <laughs> switch. No dongle. A button. The, the summoning runes that no we button. saw, like in Brazers before, is there anything that, that uh, Dash... Dash is trying to match symbols he's seen before for other portals that have been around to this one. Or demon claws. Dash has no idea. So that does give me an idea. I will walk over and place the demon hand that I've taken on the portal and see if anything happens. All right. Instantly, nothing happens. <laughs> and I do mean instant. As <laughs> soon as you think about it, it's a bad idea. Well, I turn around and high five Yannick with the demon hand. And no. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Critical weakness. <laughs> he immediately has to do two hell care in the hills. larder no, and it. just take a little peek around in there and see if I find any, like like a mouse or a rat or a cockroach or anything in there. Uh sure. I take it's a an, look. It's a hell cockroach. You don't touch cockroaches <laughs> yeah, right. in hell. It's a rad roach. If you ever see one, it's a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> just want to look and see if I find anything. Sure. Like you can find a piece of vermin. No, a live one. A live one. You have a live one. Okay. In hell. I'm trying to grab it. You have grabbed it. And then I want to chuck it into the, into the um, portal. Into the portal. A living thing. A living a thing. thing. You throw a adorable hell mouse. <gasps> Oh my god. I uh, look like, like my cousin. The tip of its tail burns <laughs> slightly. Uh, it slams against the portal, slides down, and scurries away. Oh, I just wanted to see if a dead thing was a living thing. I hope you're Good happy. job, that Lenny. I'm not happy. What are you not happy about? I don't want to talk about it. Let's go down. You, you personified racism. You're not happy about not talking? <laughs> Cold shoulder. Dash moves on. Yeah. Go to my cave. Dash finds a vermin yeah. gnome, grabs that, <laughs> and throws it against the portal. Let me see your sling. <laughs> so what was Are going we on? going down? Yes. Who's going first? Uh, Yannick Fawn. will. Fawn or... called it first and is first. Are you okay? <laughs> it's going to backfire <laughs> so gloriously. <laughs> it's just... That's Yannick's what? like, I wish we had a Geary so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him every day. <laughs> We killed Thon. <laughs> uh, you head down uh, rickety wooden uh, steps that are a little narrow, but you end up on a cave floor uh, that is uh, lit up by not much at all. Uh, pretty dark, but you can see it has a long, very straight path, not totally cut smooth or anything. It's still rough, but it, clearly someone has somehow dug this shape, and it goes about 200, 300 feet into darkness with a red light at the far end. With dark vision, does that improve the... Yes. You see just the corridor, no side doors, no objects, no presences. I see nothing. Should be safe to come down. I also see nothing. Are any of the lamps... Uh, hanging lamps removable. Can they sure. be taken down? I will go grab one. Okay. Uh, we should persist. Okay. Uh, you guys head down the corridor, uh, making your way uh, down this dark, kind of wide, maybe 30 feet wide, 20 feet tall, roughly rectangular shape. Uh, you make your way um, for 200 or so feet, the light getting brighter and brighter and brighter. No side passages, no changes uh, whatsoever until it opens up into an expanse. You've come out another side of cliff walls that your tunnel comes out the bottom of. Huge, uh, hundreds of feet tall cliff walls that expand infinitely to the right and to the left. And then you see a massive, again, field of uh, black rock, uh, some more of those strange rocky formations. It is particularly warm uh, here in this location. And you can see off in the far distance, miles away, red, uh, a red glow emanating uh, from, uh, from below that is actually hitting clouds above. So you can see like that red shape up there. Any sound? Uh, no sounds. Did the moats be ahead? The what? The lava moats. Where his power is coming from. So Clifford told us. We We're not done here, though. I think 
We should go back to the door. I do too. If the lava moats are here, that is the source of his power and should would weaken him further. But that door was so secured that it might have a powerful source of its own. Or Vestrath himself. If we're so lucky. If that's the case, we should at least... Describe what was outside again. Outside, a flat section of stone, very hard stone, slightly, uh, I can't remember the term again, fractured, um, like cleaved. So it might be a couple foot rise for hundreds of feet and then slightly lower. Uh, so uneven terrain, a couple rock formations, and then miles away, uh, you can see f- uh, f- really far, and then miles away ahead and kind of to the right, there are clouds all above, but then you can see there is some sort of red light that's reflecting off the bottom of the clouds, maybe six, seven miles away. So I guess part of our question has got to be do we think Vestrath is so weakened at this point that we stand any chance against him? And do we head for him now? Well, from what we were told by Clifford, it looks like this direction might be the source of yet more of his power that we could take away and weaken him to an even greater degree. We haven't found Vestrath yet. Well, well to say I- he wasn't here. I don't imagine we can find Vestrath and just go, oh, there you are. We'll be back later to check on you again. So what do you recommend? Just, I think at this point is where we decide, are we strong enough to go back inside and try to continue the way we're going to find him and find him as he currently is? Or take this opportunity to go after the source of his power to seek to weaken them even more. I don't believe what the big door is, is Vestrath. I don't think so. Either. Because a, a red cultist has a key to that door. It's to something powerful and strong, perhaps, but I don't think it would be to their master from whom they're trying to summon from whom that they find is hiding somewhere. All the conversations we've heard have indicated that he's not here. But the key is, if we check behind what's that, what's behind that door, after that's done, this could be the next step, and those could be the lava moats. But if we try to go to there and then try to get back, I don't know that we'll find this place ever again. And Clifford said that this is not where Vestrath resides before he left. He's not here, but we, we can't leave without knowing what's behind okay. the door that's locked by a three-pronged demon key. So go check the door. Yes. Yeah. All right. Is it overcast? Yes. Twilight-ish? Yes. <laughs> I, I did forget to mention that. <laughs> I kind of implied... So you guys are heading back the way you came. Sounds like it. And then up, and then up, up and, and then, then I think up. up, and then I think up again Correct. to the very top. I think top. there's only three ups, but the, the, the accordion stairs. Yeah. It's a... Maybe, yeah. The, the tower's different. There could be five ups now. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, uh, you are all back at the top, shifting these stairs, interestingly, uh, in front of you uh, as you get to the very top floor. Uh, on your left is the enrobing room, uh, and then on your right is this huge uh, steel door. I will hand Dash the key. Okay. <laughs> it's a good choice. Um, Dash will... Carefully avoid the traps that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. The gas trap, the trigger trap on the handle. There's no way to avoid them. So the pressure plate must be stepped on when placing in the key or before it's it's too big of a plate uh and the door uh does not seem like it will open unless you hit that switch as well even though it is a trap dash they need to be disabled or you just go for it and hope for the best and i'll give you a bonus if you do the second option of plus two to avoid all the massive trap damage dash before you take an action okay how do you think this trap above us works the the acid trap that drops acid on you gravity do you think it's do you get a sense of whether it's a gas or a liquid 
that particular one is sulfuric and it seems like it'd be more of a liquid that particular one seems it's like gas. it's more of a gas okay um I, I can set off the handle one with all of us in the other room yeah i don't think you can need to do that i think it's a good idea for everyone to be in the other room though we don't need all of us in here at the same time i might be able to help you okay. I, I can hold the key with my magic from afar, from back, and put the key in from 20 feet back without having to stand at the door. That is the wisest thing. That's a great idea. Try that. So I'm going to cast Mage Hand and have my little spectral hand reach out to grab the key from Dash. Okay. You have the interesting key in your hand. And, and then, where are you located? Um, well, wherever we all were, which I guess is... You tell me where you want to be 15 located. 15 feet back from the door. 15 feet back from the like door. safe. Can we be like outside back of the room? Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I'm in the robe of... Yeah, whatever. How, how, how big is the room? It's robe What's the depth of the room? 45 Yeah, it was 45? like 45. Yeah, I'd say whatever the range of your mage right, hand so, is. So my, my mage hand is 20 feet, so that's as far back as I can be. So I'll be like feet. 19 feet back, like whatever so the range I can do. 19 feet back. I cast using... I have a scroll um, of... Air 30 feet. bubble. Yeah, so 30 feet. Air bubble. And I cast 30 feet. a scroll of air bubble around you. All right. Okay. So I'll be 30 feet back, 15 feet inside the room. If it's 45 foot room, yes. I'm 15 feet in from the, the far side. side. Okay. So you're 20 30 feet from you're, the door. You're 29 feet from the door. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And you have an air bubble on him. Mm -hmm. Okay, you consume that scroll, our scroll master thaumaturge. And you guys are going to be outside the room? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. And I will slide with the mage hand, slide the key into the keyhole, and then rotate it clockwise. All right. The key goes in a little awkwardly. I haven't done this in a while. It's all three prongs slide in, and as you rotate, there is a clicking sound. And then I will, I mean, as far as it rotates, mm -hmm. and then Mage Hand will go to the door handle. Um, I'll try to just, like you do when, like, your fingers are dirty or you're in that really nasty um, gas station bathroom door and you're trying to not touch it much, just touch the end of the door handle because I'm the one who found that little switch on the door handle, so I know where it is, so... A mage hand trying to just grab the end of the door handle and just trying to. Why don't you just grab a paper towel? And... <laughs> it's it's, oh, it's a very large, sturdy. <laughs> so right. I'm trying to turn the door handle. Uh, all right, you try to turn. Uh, it's a big, uh, just big, sure. looped handle thing. You're able to pull, uh, and you are not able to get the door to open, but you are able to trigger some nastiness. Okay. There is a spread of green gas that billows out and immediately starts to swarm over you and you need to make a roll Even it at will the range be, of 30 feet it will be a fortitude save 22 you may add plus four from the air breathing that the bubble has given you all righty natural 17 plus 10 27 plus 4 31 all right and nice. you are safe the gas swarms you you guys see him disappear in green gas in a very quickly i'm fine fades. i'm fine I, everyone i'm fine <laughs> he turns around to say that to you and then kaboom the fireball is launched from that thing in the top and hits Holy. and detonates it has a range of 20 feet you were almost 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost there was an explosion right behind him and huge fire all behind as he's looking the wrong way and what do you say jericho i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine <laughs> no it's more i'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. then all is quiet think i'm and then um so I, I was able to do the handle but not pull the door open. Correct. Correct. So I'm going to go. Uh, Does that trigger the pressure up? plate that was on the yep. ground? Everything got triggered so when go he did that. There was, up, that's why go there was, the, the there was another way to trigger it. Okay. You didn't know. I'm going to try to go up and carefully open the door. All right. Jericho goes over and slowly cracks open the door. I think we can all yeah, go all over go there now. now. Yeah. Okay. Boom! <laughs> 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 it's a trap twice. Come on. It's a Roman candle. Jericho, you crack it open, and beyond you see a um, D20 
decently sized chamber, probably similar to this one, 45 by 45. Uh, that looks very Spartan, uh, but has another door beyond it that definitely catches your eye. You see no furniture and no people and um, just one other door out. And you creak open this door. Nice use of the air bubble. I'm going to, um, with the while my main chest up, pull that key back out. Okay. You pulled the key out. You have it in your possession. Um, and who's going in? Go ahead, Thon. Thon goes first. <laughs> All right. Thon, you run in willy-nilly is I what I have. I first. I... I checked with him. He was okay with it. Uh, you go inside. You see this room. This room has different kind of stone. Instead of wood paneling, it's stone all around you. Uh, so kind of like roughish cobblestone underneath your feet. And you see uh, two, two, three, four things of note. On the ceiling are a bunch of tiles of the uh, bass relief tiles of different symbols all over the ceiling. Not the spider that's on our studio ceiling, though, that I look right above Lauren. That's not good. <laughs> it's fine. That one's fine. Oh, you're not arachnophobic. <laughs> Forget I mentioned it. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. So there are these uh, Just symbols. Just to feel the tension. <laughs> Symbols that are on the ceiling, and uh, on the left side, there is a window that has a, a yellow uh, energy field to it, almost like a force field. It's a slightly longer rectangular window with another chamber beyond, and next to that is another door um, that you have not seen before. This one is even more impressive than the one to get into here, and it is a huge huge, large vault-like door that has four dials upon it, as well as another one of those big, thick, looped handles. Wow. Um, Dash is going to go investigate the large vault door. Okay, you are at the door. It has these four dials. These dials look very complex for a medieval setting um and they have uh notches in them and numbers on them zero through nine each of them they are currently all set to zero gash is going to start uh playing with them and he is going to change the first notch to the number three okay it rotates it takes a little bit of movement but it gets there He's going to change the second notch to the number four. Right. The third notch to the number five. And the fourth notch to the number six. Three, four, five, six. In that order. Correct. Would you like to describe why you've come to that number? Yeah. Uh, there's a note that we encountered down below where we were talking about the cultists. Uh, where red is first. Uh, blue comes second. The green is the third. And the last is yellow. Uh, red is three letters, blue is four letters, green is five, and yellow is six letters. He sets all of those dials to those numbers. Uh, th is there a switch or, or the large handle? There's the large loop handle just like the other door. Everybody hold your breath. <gasps> and Tash uh, pulls on the lever. He pulls it and dramatically nothing happens. Felt good about that one. I'd give you a hero point. I thought yeah, right? right? oh, oh, well, there was a lot of confidence That's in that. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> what is the? Uh, okay, it's over there now. Um, I was getting ready. To... Best trap. <laughs> <laughs> what are the? What were the other doors again? Brief descriptions, sorry. Doors. There's no other oh, doors. Sorry. Just this one door. With, the window with, with the yellow energy next to it, and then the uh, bass relief. Bass relief symbols on the ceiling above. So I'll check out the window with the yellow energy oh all right uh you go through the you look at the window and you see uh that what the door is blocking on the other side it is a treasure vault here for the cultists and all their operations you see there is an overturned chest that has several hundred gold spilled out of it some really fine red cloaks with runes inside of them uh there are a bunch of uh strange potions on here that you do recognize uh Yonic, and then a cauldron uh as well that is set up on a special little stone pedestal what do i recognize uh potions okay 
So the energy itself, it's it's like a force barrier. Like, yep. Okay. Yeah, let you see the contents of what's inside. What? Uh, who has that uh, chain that we took off the blue cultists? The oh. ivory pendant. Yes. Uh, I do. Blah. With yes. a moist ivory piece <laughs> of colored symbols on it. With hell bacteria. What are the color <laughs> symbols that are on it? Uh, strange things of like uh, ravens or trees or stuff like that. Um, they're different colors. I happen to have them right here. Oh, look at that. Three. Four. Three. Four. Four. Three. Ooh. Cool. And, and then a fourth. And then a fourth. These are the Maybe. reliefs that are nope. up top? No. That's what was on the symbol that Jericho asked. So you've got these uh, symbols that are on there of the uh, uh, three uh, green symbols of a skull, a serpent, a tree, then some yellow serpent trees, some blues that are skulls and spiders and all sorts of things, and a bunch more for ones that are red. Right. Well, there are your numbers. Um. These are the. Can please confirm for me where these reliefs are? These are in the ceiling? No, those are on the charm that you got. The, the charm that was in my uh -huh. mouth. And each side okay. has colored symbols that are in a, in a vertical row. So those are the, the piece of paper I gave you, are one, each one of those rows are the four different sides of that charm. Okay. So, do you think so it would if be your first. Six, five, three, two. Same, change that four to a result? two. Changing. Yeah, there okay. you go. Uh, the four to a two. So it's three, two, five, six. Three, two. Two, five, six. And give it another go. Red goes first. No. Yeah. Other way. Uh, red. If so. If, red, if red, red is first. Uh, red is first. Oh, uh, yep. Blue there it is. is second. There you go. So it's six. Yeah. Six, five, five three, three two, two. two. Six, five, three, two. Okay. So Good changing job, the yes. dials to six, five, three, and two, matching the colors of each of the symbols that are here. So there are the number six of, red. There are five yeah. blue. There are three green and there are two yellow symbols. Okay. And then trying the door that oh, way. Oh, we could just walk away. Hold your breath. Give me that Stretch. number one more time. Six. We're five, trusting a window. Three, three two. 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 All right. And before you grab onto this, anyone watching and wants to see these, I'll post these on the Discord server so you can see what these symbols were as well. Yeah, they're rad. Um, who's opening the door? Dash. Don. Oh, Dash. Yeah. <laughs> Dash grabs onto the door just as confident as before, but this time as he pulls, nothing happens. Oh. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody repeat verbatim what's on that note? Read it aloud again. The one that was in the scriptorium? Yes. Oh, oh the one that Jericho found in the in the scroll case in the summoning room. Do not approach the entrance to Vestras' lair. His guardians will immediately cut off the water spout to him, and they and will likely then cut you down. Only through deep meditation can you connect to our lord. Okay. All right, and then the other one. Uh, red cultists are first. Blue then comes second. Green is then third, and the yellow is last of all. What are you thinking, Galen? Um, not much at the moment. Jericho's gonna go try a number. Okay, Jericho. Okay, I'll have a tree. He's gonna go try one four one two. Fourteen twelve. Where's this number coming from? Um, the only symbol that appears in every single one of the columns of each color is uh, the coiled serpent and the tree and the tree. Um, but the tree doesn't seem like it'd be his. The serpent seems more like it would be a Vestrathian one rather than oh, a tree. That's a great adjective. Um, and in the red one, if we're going by that same idea that red is first, it's in the first position. And in the blue one, which is supposed to be the uh, second, it's uh, the serpent is in the fourth position. And then in the green one, it's in the uh, third position. So one, four, and the... 
Uh, excuse me, it's in the yeah, in the second. So three and then two. One four. One three, four one. two one. One four two one. Yeah. Two, one, right. one, I keep one four at the trees. two one. And if that doesn't work, then you have the alternate of the tree. You can yeah. try. Fourteen twenty one. Uh, all right. Can you show those symbols again to the camera for anyone uh, checking yeah. us out there? So, I don't know how. Is that okay? Yeah, there's some coming through. Uh, all right. What was the number? One more time. One, four, two, one. One, four, two, one on this vault door you've been trying to get into for some time in this chamber with the crazy symbols on the ceiling, with the magical field and this tower you've killed and slaughtered your way through. You put in those numbers, you grab onto the handle, and nothing happens. Uh, Seems reasonable to me. I, I, I like where you're going with it. What's so the symbols, the crazy symbols on the ceiling? Yes. What are those? You look at those, you see there are symbols on the ceiling uh, of a skull, a raven, a serpent, a horned demon face, a torch, a hand, a spider, a pair of eyes, an hourglass, a dagger, a shadowy figure, a gem, a pentagram, a bat, and a dead tree. I have an image here for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have that written down in my last note the faster leaves in the ceiling. That was I really, need to get a little faster. I'll be right back. And a fourth. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, these are somewhat similar. Show uh, show that to Cam there, uh, Alan. Seth, perfect. These are the symbols of bass relief on the top of this vault chamber that are inset in the ceiling uh, above. Okay. Dash slash Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, as a light bulb, the the, re, the relief symbols, uh, a lot of them match the same ones as on the charm, uh, and and not all of them do. Right? There's there's a cute couple that are on here that are not on the charm. For example, there's a hand and a torch that's on here that we don't see anywhere listed on the charm. Uh, but the hourglass is here, and the skulls are here, and. Uh, it, you know, the, the serpent and the, and the tree and, and other ones are here. So uh, what's coming up to me right now is I'm I'm looking at potentially uh, a count of different ones that, that are available. The thing with the colored symbols that we have is there's one of each. There's no multiples of any of those symbols. So... Where does the the number match lie, which is what I'm looking for. And I'm kind of thinking about the ones that aren't there and where they may count in. So if red comes first. Chris comes back from a break. Did you figure it all out? <laughs> Give me my money. <laughs> Gots to get paid. How have you not solved this yet? Or he just sits down and goes, oh, yeah, here. Oh, I got it. We literally have heard nothing happen when we've attempted the vault door, right? Yep, nothing. And can we see anything outside the window? Has anything changed? Out there? There's the window beside the vault door. Nothing has changed. You just see lots of goodies beyond. Okay. So let's just try three two five six for shits and grins. Uh, why why three two five six? Because that's just how many of green, yellow, blue, and red there are. In that order. Yep. Okay. Three. Okay. Two, five, six. Different than what you've done before. Yeah. And Yannick, you're pulling the door. Yep. You pull of the giant vault door and nothing happens. Assume so, but. At least we're not hearing anything like activate or go off no. that we're aware of. I might have it. What do you think, Galen? Okay, just, just one second. What, what are you doing a die drop? Just saying. It's your rules. Okay. I'm going to need more time to work on this. Keep going. <laughs> I changed my mind. Holy cow. We have a bunch of fans that are uh, coming in from a raid from another channel, and the Dr. <laughs> Koala Bear just gifted five subs to Yay! them. Yay! Nice. Thank you, Dr. Koala Bear. Right Woo! in the middle Welcome. of our riveting moment of yeah. us just uh, <laughs> looking down, yeah. trying to solve a, a, a puzzle as we just quietly. All right, Thonwill in the house. You got any good ideas? Thonwill cannot contribute to this. 
Tech spoilers. <laughs> okay. Dash. Yeah. So, um, can we accept fan submissions? There's a. Uh, no assistance on this crazy vault from fans. What do you what are you thinking there? Oh, well, this is not super helpful. But so the red one, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Right. I went symbols. through this in order: one, two, three, four, five, six. Then what's different that could be numerical? Well, all of them got these little pips around the outside, little shapes, almost like the markers on the clock. Mm -hmm. Right. This one happens to have eight. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That'd be an eight. Next one is five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. This one has nine. There's nine little pips around the outside. Uh, this one's two and three. Those That's both an assumption. Have one, two, three, four. If you're looking at the torch, right, you can't see the top of the torch or the bottom of the torch. That's correct. I get it. I get That's it. That's correct. You go, we go by what's shown. Yeah. Uh, those two both have four, which gives me. I don't know. It's just a, it's just another possibility. Because if you notice, all of these have well, not down here, not down here, but the first several right. of them. The, the sword doesn't. The bat doesn't. Yeah, but they're also past the first nine. So, but they're also outside the realm of what we got. It's just one possibility. I do I do like it? All right, I'll give it a shot. Oh, it can't be that easy. Oh, it could be. What do you What do you got, Thon? Hold on. Just All shut right. up. Everyone, leave me alone. <laughs> Thon, out of character, you little bitter. <laughs> what the hell? The Jake Elven Ranger. Leave me alone, <laughs> bastards. There was something going on here with the bard. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, sneak up and do eight, nine, mm -hmm. four, four. Eight, nine, four, four, based on? So, um, as I look, that there's like, on the red one here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And they said red was our first number, at least with their colors My that they God gave God almighty, you're a clever SOV. I love it. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and so I just counted one, two, three, four, five, six along here. I'd like to solve the puzzle. <laughs> And uh, that one has uh, uh, eight pips around the outside, eight points. Okay, so, so what was your number again? 8944. Eight, niner, four, four. I never say niner, but okay. okay. And then you're <laughs> opening the door. Well, I'm attempting. Okay, you put an 8944, four, you pull the handle, and it does not open. I'm not that smart. Oh, my God. I'd like to solve the puzzle. And there's an excited elven ranger. Elves are smart. I have, I have, this is I your have zero occultism. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not a cult. This is this is great. Love it. This is pure intelligence right here. What's your number and why? I'd like to set the dials, please. Okay, what are you setting the dials to? I have no idea what he's doing. Uh, let's see. Um, the red is first. Uh, set to, to a five. Okay. The blue is second. Set that to a four. Mm -hmm. The green is third. I set that to a seven. Mm -hmm. Yellow is last. I set it to a one. Okay. And are you opening the door? Opening the door. All right. You pull and it opens. <laughs> What? All right, tell us why. You got to tell us why. What? The door vault opens and the treasure room is made accessible by the elf. Please reveal your secret elven knowledge. It's like it just like fuming. Like just be oh, bright red. Yeah. The patterns given by the uh, this here. The code, the, the charm. Code? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Going from that and using this is the key. The mosaic tiles the mosaic on the top. Tile. Going in order, top to bottom, uh, you find the snake Yep. and go to the skull from the snake. Mm -hmm. From the skull, go to the spider, the next in line, mm -hmm. then to the hourglass. <laughs> it forms a number five. Oh, I got the you, next yeah. one over, following the same path, forms a number four, then a seven, then a one. Brilliant. Tales That's so awesome. freaking smart. I wow. the same thing as you. I still I don't get it, but oh, I'm not going to ask. Oh, go, go. Believe that. Great job. Good job, well Thon! That was I like that one. That was good. <laughs> the giant door swings open without a sound. It is an amazing vault door. And inside, you're 
practically greeted by Willy Wonka himself. There's tons of treasure uh, and goodness. It is Candyland for adventurers. Um, heading inside, you guys find uh, some goodies in there. You find some goodies in the form of, and I will let you guys uh, spend some time to rest and recover based off of all this so you can get some healing from the paladin as necessary. Yep. Uh, and we can also identify uh, the items here. But if you want to identify the previous items, then that will take additional time. Um, the ones that were earlier in mm -hmm. this tower. But I will give you all the ones here. So what you have found are... Four elixirs of life lesser. I think you guys have come across these ones before. Three D six plus six. Three D six plus six. Correct. Yeah, we have five of them gifted to us from um, uh, the Soline priest. Okay. Um, and then you see there are a bunch of goodies that look like you've seen some elements of them being manufactured in the past hemlock you're not sure how these idiots stole or acquired them uh you Sweet. see there is a gold cased bullet uh it allows it to curve just a bit in flight once it's been